Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice, but get on. Amanda, you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Adam Ray back in studio. Yeah, baby. Adam's shooting a stand-up special yeah. in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, Comedy on State. I just say, what would Brett Favre do? And he'd shoot his special in Wisconsin. He would, wouldn't he? First of all, he'd send a dick pic. And then yes. once it was uh, you know, not properly received, then he'd go, all right, well, let me pivot here and do a stand-up special where Did- people love me. I the dick pick. Let's let's really break down. <laughs> we'll come the back game to the special. Film. But anyway, on if you're the, in Wisconsin, come out this week in uh, Comedy on State. The dick pick. I feel like handing a guy a device that he can take a picture of his hog with. That's yeah, a hot gun. And use the same device to send it to any possible suitors. Too quick. It would be like just dropping off pistols in a monkey cage. Yeah. And then just going, I don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> yes. but we're going to find out. Yes. And, you know, it'd be the beginning of them, like, looking down the barrel of it. But eventually, you would hear shots fired. I think so. It's a I think gun. we've savvied up With now. the dick pic? I, I, I think that I don't hear about we have them learned being... how, like, the, the next gen has learned lessons from the people who got caught sort of mid culture you know what i mean so like when and where to send or how to get the proper lighting like like brett, you think that's what the, the problem with Favre's dick pic was? grew up in kiln indiana well, mississippi yeah. yeah you know having his dad chase him with a pickup truck and beat on him and stuff yeah. i mean he grew up cow tipping he he grew up like for those of us that are old the first half of our life was no different than little house on the prairie mm. You just walked everywhere. You know, if you wanted some entertainment, you'd ball up some foil and throw it at somebody. Like, yeah. we didn't have anything. And then all of a sudden... Their version of Smear the Queer was Tackle the Jew. Right, right. Yeah. right. And now you get a device and it's full of porn and yeah. you can take pictures of you and stuff like that. And we just, like the chimps in the monkey cage with the pistols. Can't control it. The future generations of monkeys will understand the pistol. I think so. What it can do. And have a little more responsibility yeah. around Learn it. Learn from our mistakes. Respect mm-hmm. to Yeah. 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 I don't know if, um, you know, I don't have kids. I don't, I have buddies with some teenage kids. I'd be curious to know how, I know they're Snapchat in a way. So I would assume, and even my niece, who's now 14 in, in high school and has a, has a boyfriend. So I'm like, fuck, I got to learn every. I'm going to have to call Jean-Claude Van Damme and get some jujitsu or some karate or some, you know, I've got a white belt in Taekwondo that doesn't get you too far. Mm. And for those of you who don't know much about Taekwondo, that's the belt they give you when you sign up. Yeah. So no real if training. It's either that or bungee cord. They got to keep that gi close. <laughs> yeah. It's Strictly really a gi closer. It's not it even is. a belt. It is. But yeah. there's got to be, you know, I would assume it. I mean, I tried to check her phone at one point. When I was, she was to do something, not to check that. And she got really like, whoa. And I was oh, like, yeah. in front of my sister too. My sister was like, what the fuck? And Uh-oh. she's like, no, you can look. And she's like, and then I was like, do you have stuff in there that you should not have? And she's like, no, it's fine. I it's just, cool. Just don't swipe. Yeah, dude. Exactly. Just don't. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? If you're receiving it, but not sending it, I guess I have to like. You know, it's a litmus p- take a test side. if someone won't just slide the phone over, totally. whether it's the niece or the wife or the husband back and forth. You know, the other test to do with people is if you run into a friend, just go, you know, you butt dial me all the time and and I can hear you just talking. You don't even know you call. Wow. And if they go, hey, man, I, I, I was drunk. I was joking when I was talking about you, <laughs> like or whatever. That's oh, guilt. Yeah. That's a that's a beginning to a great movie. I don't know if it's a rom com or a psychological thriller, but just somebody getting butt dialed and hearing like an entire plot for a murder, yes. or a, a cheating scandal, or maybe someone found the potion for Brad Williams to grow. Like, there's got to be some sort of <laughs> there's some sort of thing where they you basically set the whole movie up with a butt dial. Uh, butt dial would be a good name for the for the actual film. It feels it. like it's in like the beer league category. Yes. Like you'd be like, is it like a goofy slapstick comedy? You're like, no, it's actually Liv Schreiber's in it. We'll get the broken lizard guys going on this one immediately. Yeah, right? All right. So back to uh, culture. Yeah. Because uh, <clears throat> you guys are younger. And so I don't think you understand culture like at heart <laughs> what it used to be. Not at all. But uh, <laughs> if you want to know what's going on when it was going on, you have to either watch commercials yeah. from the day or you have to watch very 
popular network TV shows from the day. Right. And the jokes they made, the way they dressed, the way the hairstyles were, it was all of the moment. Yes. So if you watch an episode of Love Boat, that's what 1979 looked like. That's those were the styles. That's how people spoke. It's indicative of the culture of the time, right? The shows really mirrored, I guess, what we were doing. And Love Boat was a big network. Watch it with your kids. Could Fuck Cruise have been an alternative title for Love Boat? Like, I don't think I've seen an episode. Was everyone just banging and slanging on that? See, that would be the reboot if it was remade today. Fuck Cruise? Yeah. Hosted by Nikki Glaser. (laughs) Nikki, if you're listening. (laughs) Not, but, but. Set against the backdrop of, of 1978. This is how people reacted. Now, it's a whole new thing. I mean, you know, everybody's, you know, Russell Brand is getting fucked up. Everyone's getting me too Like, there's no, no means no. Believe all women. Is anyone getting me three Yeah, I'd like to. I'd <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Three'd. How do you get that? It's a humble brag. Third input. <laughs> So uh, I'll the show you input. great alternative title for butt dial. Yes. I'll show you the very beginning of the love boat episode I watched last night Oof. and keep in mind, it wasn't just passengers <clears throat> fucking everyone on the ship who worked on the ship was fucking the passengers. So it's and, got a little below deck vibe in there. Yeah. It made no bones about it. All right. So here's the ship's doctor. But it was a running oh. joke. I, and, and, and also the thing I can't wrap my mind around is it was done with the consent of Princess Cruises. They would show the Princess Cruises banner on the smokestack and stuff like that. Like, like it was an advertisement for Princess Cruises. I didn't even know... <clears throat> People cruised. I thought it was just gay slang. I didn't know. You I, thought I, cruise? Well, yeah. Well, the Corollas are a landlocked group. <laughs> you know, there's no way. Like, I couldn't get my mom to drive me to, um, oh, God, it was Teddy Wilson's house in Van Nuys from sure. North Hollywood, much well. less. We're not going to set sail. <laughs> to show. My mom would, if I would have talked to her about going on a cruise, she would have been confused. Yeah. Like, she wouldn't even said no. Did she, she not been, know like, that that wasn't a thing that even was that people did? Did she know that you could get on a boat? From from watching Love Boat, okay. we were made aware <laughs> that, that people... I was Ventured so out. fucking yeah. white trash hillbilly. Like, I used to watch... When I'd watch Love Boat, I'd be like, luggage? Who the fuck has their own luggage? Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Like, our shit was in a pillowcase. Yeah. We, were, we, we traveled like the hobos rode the rails, sure. you know? There's people with matching sets of luggage walking onto that ship. But That's rich. Just think... All right, so Princess Cruises had to have script approval because it's their cruise yeah. line that's being... Great point. So there, there can't advertised. be an episode where everyone gets botulism from the chicken they no. serve for dinner <laughs> because then the cruise line would go, we don't want you saying everyone's throwing up and has diarrhea because our food's tainted. You yeah, know? If there's a diarrhea outbreak, that's going to make them look bad. There's right. a brand partnership. Right, but yeah. they had no problem with the employees of the ship, especially the doctor, yeah. his through line was fucking passengers. Yeah, I think it's like very family feud. And, th- and, they, and this is... And this is <laughs> Different kind of body count. This is mainstream, prime time, 35 million Americans wow. watch it, Friday night, you know, 8 o'clock. We've this this is up. right in the middle of America. The, the entire family's watching this. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll play you Dr. Bricker over here. Dr. Bricker? Yeah. Adam Bricker's his name. Oof, all right. Strong this, name. Yeah, yeah, big dick energy. Well, hi. My name's Amber. Of course, this isn't one of those times. <laughs> My girlfriend met you on a cruise last summer, and she hasn't stopped talking about you. Oh, I hate patients who kiss and tell. <laughs> All right, pause it there. That was Her a joke. Girlfriend that was, the... was fucking him on the last cruise, and he goes, "I hate nose. I hate big mouth bitches." <laughs> it's just, but this chick's got a, a rack. And you hear the sax. When you hear the sax, it's, oh, it's yeah. going it's going something's down. Something's getting wet and something's getting hard when you hear the sax. All right. Now, who so, is this guy? Was he on MASH, too? He looks familiar. That's Bernie Capel. And Bernie Capel. Was he a sweet treat of this time? He played. He was in Get Smart. Okay. And he was uh, like a German agent, in, a Russian or German agent in Get Smart. He played Siegfried. Mm. Siegfried and and get smart with a German accent, but all right. So 
He was a match. Look, she's just walking onto the ship. This is this is Act One. Okay. This is two minutes into this thing. Into the episode, yeah, she's, she's boarding the ship. She's telling the doctor, "You're." Porking one of my friends. And she couldn't stop talking about <laughs> and it. And she loved your fucking wild hog. Yeah. And now she's in for some fun. Oh, I hate patients who kiss and tell. No, you don't. <laughs> what time are your office hours? Office hours? Mm-hmm. For you? I'll make a cabin call. Oh. <laughs> and right. we're off to the races. Yeah. We're off to the races. He's the ship's physician. He's like, you don't have to see a doctor after... Uh, to know if I gave you something because I'll give you the cream when uh, you yeah. leave my cabin. We're going bareback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> one's, <laughs> there's no clothes, there's no condoms. Now, by the way, it's not like he's in his street clothes and it, Friday's his day off. Oh, he's on the clock. He's full, fully uniformed on the clock, on the cock. He's there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's they now. walk away in like her arms in his arm, that his hand is He's walking on her, her hand. up to the camera. He's going to bang her right now. Right there. He, right. I honestly thought that was going to end with like, well, well, here's my number, or I'm in cabin 238, you know, but I'd love to be in 469, and, you know, ha, 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 you know, 69 <laughs> joke in the 70s, and then, uh, and then, you know, I'll see you at the buffet, maybe. He's I'll be walk- the guy wearing the I love pussy shirt, you know, He's- some some little out joke to, to get, but no, they're just like, hey, I, let's right. do it. Yeah. But now it's time to bigger bang. picture, this is a snapshot of our society and what it was in 1979. This is perp. If it, if it was on this show, that's what we did, or that's what we agreed wow. to, or that's what we looked the other way on. This is n- not an outlier. This wow. is mainstream ABC Aaron Spellings. This is his Aaron Spelling. Big, that's right. And he in the middle, the pulse of what is, was... is 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 society yeah, can this get is totally okay. All right, then w- one minute. After this scene, and I, I just cut to it, but it was literally 45 seconds after the scene at the beginning, uh, Florence Henderson, a la Brady Bunch, Brady Bunch, is uh, seen by ship maintenance worker Pat Harrington. Hmm. Pat Harrington. Now that sounds like the name of the doctor. Pat Harrington was in One Day at a Time yeah. and played the building supervisor. The guy would show up with the tool belt on. Oof. So, of course, they said, all right, well, you can be the maintenance guy. Now, this is 45 seconds later. Uh-oh. I'm in love. <laughs> is that a whistle, or did your brain just boil over? <laughs> you know, I should help you find your cabin. I mean, this is a big boat. You could get lost. That's just what I was thinking. Get lost. <laughs> Excuse me, I realize you're new on this ship, but making leering remarks to the passengers is not your job. Uh-huh. Well, whose job is it? Because I'd like to swap. <laughs> I apologize. All right. I mean, the guys just go hard in the paint. This yeah. guy's like, hey, look, this boner ain't going to flush itself. She's like... <laughs> All right. Well, also just fix the the ladder. He's like, yeah, I'd like to climb some. I mean, it was just. Like, are, are the yeah. people of Princess Cruises reading the script? Great and question. they're like, the doctor on the ship is betting the big titted chick who just walked off, who explains you fuck my friend the last cruise. And then we got the guys, the maintenance guy, yeah. just up there leering at all the chicks who come walking on the ship. Hey, babe. This hurts the brand. This is a family friendly cruise. But the point is, is we looked at this just you know like. Um, like guys getting perms yeah. and platform shoes and uh, weird bell bottoms that laced up in the front and on the back and the mood mood rings and pet rocks. We just looked at it, it as like, yeah, this is where we're at. This is society. Somebody at the this top. This is where we're living. Yeah. So, now, here's my, my question. I mean, somebody at the top definitely read it, and then, but not all the way through. There was a lot of skimming going on. But I also think they just, th- th- I think somebody at uh, Princess Cruz was like, yeah, this is like, I don't know, a cool image thing. Like we're, a, the sh- I mean, the show it felt like probably they could get a, a strong, you know, indication that it's going to be a popular thing if it's on network TV. Here's my other question. Was this the only show that was like the truth teller of like the times or did each era have multiple programs? Like in the 80s and the 90s, was there one love boat? Probably another Aaron Spelling, right? Like Melrose Place or yeah, Beverly it- Hills 920 was like, yep, this is what, if you live in a complex and there's a pool, <laughs> that's anal's right. involved. That's right. I mean, a lot spelling. of hot looking people hanging out. <laughs> by the way, I've lived in a lot of apartments. Never seen anything above a four hanging out by the pool. <laughs> yeah, 
Never. I lived. Uh, I lived in the um, in an apartment complex on Laurel and Hollywood above the Laugh Factory. That was like I always would describe it as Melrose Place, and it had a pool in the middle. And yeah, it was all families or like air, people that were air. A lot of Russians swimming laps at eight a.m. And then there were people that were Airbnb ing it that should. I mean, there was like a rotation of of clients coming in. <laughs> And I had this Polish landlord, and my buddies from Seattle came down to visit. We bought these pool floaty chairs from Target. We're laying in there, drinking some beers. She comes down, Adam, you can't have the pool chairs in the pool. And I was, you know, I don't do accents, but she's like, that's, please take the pool chair out. And we're like, Roxana, you know, it's fine. We're just, you know, it's, there's no lifeguard on duty. What if you drown? I was like, if I drown in a Target pool chair drinking a Coors Light, this is how it's supposed to go. Right. You know, let this be my story. And then I put him up on the little patio we had, and then she calls me and goes, the owner of the building came by and saw that you had the pool chairs on your, and asked you to put them inside, because she said, if you can't have them at all, I don't even want to see them. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that was the beginning of the end. And then I got in trouble for smoking weed, and then a locksmith, uh, after the Ghostbusters premiere, I locked myself out, and I locked my keys, and I was drunk and high, and I walked back from the Chinese theater, and I called this locksmith, and he had a little bit of an attitude problem, and I was like, hey, man, can you bust in my door? And he had like 90 keys, and none of them worked, and I was like, dude, how do you not have the key? And he was like, are you questioning my, what I do? I was like, no, I'm just really baked, and it's 5 a.m., and I'd like mm-hmm. to get in. And he goes, you want to get in? And then he fucking drop kicked the door, and it knocked, <laughs> and busted my door, and Roxanne came down, chewing me out, being like, you're going to have to move out. You're breaking doors. It's 5 a.m. Keep in mind, I had gotten um, Ray Parker Jr.'s uh, phone number that night at the Ghostbusters premiere because I met him. Wow. And I was like, man, I'd love to have you on the podcast. I had, oh, this is crazy. I had butt dialed Ray Parker Jr. And when I get in and I smoke another bowl at 530, I look down at my phone, 24 minutes and 52 seconds, Ray Parker Jr. <laughs> oh, wow. I swear to God. Though. And this guy, he got beginning in. He got the, the locksmith showing up being like, What's going on, man? I'm like, I'm just trying to get in. Just a little fucked up. Not getting in. Do you not have the right keys? Fuck you, man. Jean-Claude, door breakdown. Me inside. Roxana, fuck you, Adam. Me inside, smoking a bowl. All on Ray Parker's voicemail. <laughs> I you had, think he deleted it, or do you think he woke up to a 25-minute voicemail? <laughs> I listened to the whole I think thing. He heard yeah. the whole thing, yeah. and he kept it. <laughs> I had, yeah, my first apartment. God, what was the guy? Had a guy underneath me managed the place. Al, weird dude. There's a picture of Al somewhere from that apartment, <laughs> man. I mean, he was on a, you know, it's 1985, and he's still wearing pomade in his hair and sure. his horn rim glasses. He, you know, he looked like one of the Jersey Boys or something, but it's like the 1980s. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah, that's Al. Good Lord. Wife beater. Had the... Uh, and look what he's wearing. I, he oh, had, wifey. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, <laughs> and his hair slicked back. He's wearing horn rim glasses. Um, Al lived directly below us. And it's a couple things. He had like a Ham's beer koozie that he had completely worn through. Like he yeah. would just come home from work every day, pop a beer in it, and walk around and water stuff on the lawn. Al was an interesting dude. Al had, we had a few run ins with Al. <clears throat> Al, we all lived, a, I lived a, in a one bedroom with three dudes or three of us all together. Um, we had a fold out sofa. One of the legs was bad on the sofa. It didn't fold out all the way. It sat above the carpet like four inches. And I had a couple of roommates who got laid a lot and they'd bang away on that fold out sofa and it would, that leg would just go boom and just keep banging on Al's ceiling. <laughs> and Al didn't mind. No. But Al had a few different, he had some hot takes. Like he, she showed up one time. And he asked if, I uh, said he's seen a lot of ladies coming in and out of the apartment. And then he paused and he said, why don't you send one down to me? Ooh, and, what? And, and I always thought, like, how would that work? Yeah. You know, like Sharon shows up and I'd go, hey, could you blow Al, the middle-aged guy, yeah, like down and then you know, come, back, home. come back up? Like, my landlord's home. Why don't we send a lady out to, down to him? He wanted you to pimp someone out to him. He, he... He one time a guy moved out in the unit and the guy was apparently a sex freak. And when he left, he left hundreds of butt plugs and oh, dildos God. And, and chains and whips and shit. Look, I le- I've left a couple bags of Doritos in a hotel room. Right. You know, this is and not I, that's that. on me, but this is not that. Yeah. Al bagged the whole thing up, oh. strap ons and everything. Nothing in a package. Everything's out of the fucking cellophane. Just bought them in a box, brought them right up to our units. Like, 
you guys look like you could use this. <laughs> and I, well, of course, we didn't do, uh, we didn't go, uh, yeah. yeah we leftover took plugs. The, he sorted through it. And took the, uh, <laughs> didn't find my size. I, I remember, I remember feeling uh, one of our female friends actually put the strap on on and then chase me around the apartment. As for, for a fleeting yeah, moment, yeah, I funny. knew what it was like to be a young, attractive woman in this town. <laughs> you know, I could, oh my God. I felt it. Like, I felt like, oh man, I'm going to be violated. Yeah, not good. Um, then uh, another time he showed up and he uh, said, uh, I don't care about all the noise you guys are making. Uh, I wear earplugs. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, yeah, you want to know why I wear earplugs? I knew he was going to say that. I wear earplugs when I go to bed. I said, no, I mean, we're good. And he was like, I'll tell you why. It's not because of the noise you make. It's in case I have to use this. He pulls up his fucking shirt and there's a pistol stuffed into his fucking oh, pants. Weirdo. And I'm like, oh, my fucking wow. God. Surprise around every corner. But he every, practiced that in the mirror a few times before yeah, he came I'm over. Yeah, sure. I'm sure. Everything, certain people just look like, like everything you're describing that this guy uh, abides by is not uh, a shock. Like the, no. the face matches the crime. I mean, look at, he took his fucking glamour shots in front of a freeway, you know, Bush. I, I don't know. This looks like it's like in the Jaws uh, ride at Universal Studios. Oh, man. he is. That he had a gold chain or like his greatest... Um, gift. I mean, the thing that he w was most coveted is he had a hose on one of those big plastic spools that yeah. you could run, you could with wheels on it and stuff. That was a big fucking ticket item, and he kept it in his unit. He kept the hose in his unit, and he was a very suspicious guy. And one day, I, I went to him and I was like, "Al, can I borrow the hose?" Um, I want to hose off my front porch or whatever. And he's like, what hose? And I'm like, the hose behind you in your unit. Like, I'm, I'm looking at it. It's like, that hose doesn't leave. I'll do it. I'm like, Al, you don't have to do it. I'll just lend me the hose and I'll hose off my front porch. I'll bring it right back. He's like, yeah, I don't let that hose. I mean, I Who did. him? This hose was a, in his world, was a big yeah. fucking Prize possession. ticket item. And uh, then he spoke in riddles. I remember one time he came down to the garage and he's like, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. I'm going to be in San Diego for a few days. And I was like, oh, what are you doing in San Diego? And he goes, security. And I go, security? And he goes, security. And I'm like, wor working for, for somebody? And he goes, enough said. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, oh, this mystery God. of Al. Yeah. I didn't want to have a discussion with Al. Al would be one of those guys who would start a conversation with you. Like, you know these assholes who go like, uh, hey, I have an idea for a killer reality show. Oh, yeah? And you go, yeah, what is it? I can't. I, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too good. I got so the next it, big Shark Tank invention. You'll, you'll steal it. Yeah. And it's like, all right, then don't fucking bring it up. Dude, this then is the don't bring it up. So he's definitely like, you know, I might uh, be going to Columbus, Ohio this weekend. Yeah. But if you hear about me going to Florida, uh, tell people I was in Jersey. The and you're worst. Like, well, so where are you? He definitely, by the way, has pulled some fast ones on, uh, you know, women and been like, they're like, wait, were you wearing a condom? Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. Yeah, but if I wasn't, the kid's yours and not mine. Him and Dr. Bareback Bricker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he so, could definitely put this guy on the love boat. Al, the worst day of my life was also Al's worst day. He had a mangy, mangy little dog named Skipper. And he dragged that dog with him everywhere. That's amazing how you remember all this. And one day Skipper died. And I was like, fuck, Skipper died. And Al was like watering. You know, Al was constantly just walking up and down the lawn. Just water. He, he didn't need to be outside. He was just walking up and down. And, and, and I was like, fuck, my motorcycle's out there. I got to get to my motorcycle and go. But Al's going to, he's going to corner me. You know, and he's like, or, and I, I like hustle out when he turns his back or walks the other and I like hop on my bike, I fire it up. And here comes Al, you know, Skipper died. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. It was my best friend. And I'm like, yeah, that's putting the helmet on and firing up the bike, throwing some revs on it. And he broke down about oh. about Skipper. And Al and I were, he was trying to have a moment yeah. that I, I didn't want to have. I didn't want to have that moment with Al. But yeah, someone's got to chronicle all the horrible roommates and all the horrible apartments. 
And all the horrible everyone. That's a reality show I'd watch the shit out of. Just take all the landlords and put them in a, you know, the same way they would do like celebrity rehab. Yes. Like celebrity landlords. <clears throat> or just landlords, landlord city. I don't know. Go around. Maybe it's one landlord from each state that's kind of like every every city in states got Well, what got they need to do is they need to experience what it's like to live with them. <laughs> totally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, yes. Yeah. So... Anyway, we had a box of dildos. Like who's their landlord? Al, Al Lost Skipper. His son was ex- mm. a, a, his son was the a version of him that was twenty five years younger, greased right. back hair, horn rim glasses. And he'd take over, and all they do is just walk along, just walk along the lawn and just water. This is just on patrol. So, yeah, like the just whole time. To lock you in. Is Al still with us? I, See, in my mind, Al was an old man because I was 21. Yeah. You know, but now I look at him and he was younger than I am now. Sure. But it's back when people dressed their age. Right. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, people, you uh, go back to the Love Boat. When you watch the Love Boat and there's a 51 year old woman on the show, her hair is short. It's done up. She has old She's time, wearing yeah. like a smock. You know what I mean? It's not the bitches from the Beverly Hills Housewives. Right. They're wearing the skinny dress, jeans 20. with the hair down to their waist. Like there's none of that. There's no no showing off of mm. the titties. Once you hit forty as a woman, you dress like Aunt B from Mayberry. All right. Now I have another clip to compare and contrast the times we were in. Great in 1979. Versus what mainstream TV has has brought us today, and how how things have changed. Oh, how the times have changed! <laughs> yes, and I did a, a hard the butt hit. plugs have gotten better too. Al, if he's still with us, would probably be the first to attest. <laughs> yeah. The technology, the technology is just we. They're faster. They're glidier. Nobody put those things in a dishwasher. <laughs> nobody pureled anything. <laughs> we just reached into the box of dildos. Yeah. Spent dildos, used oh, dildos, God. and like immediately there was one that was a novelty. It was like two and a half feet and five inches <clears throat> around, you know. And my buddy Ray just picked it up, and started beating me with that's, it. That's you not know? right. Yeah, it's like how, now how can I fuck with my friends with this stuff? That's now, what you look. Yeah. At. I might I might come off like a prude, but I don't. I can't. I'm trying to picture a butt plug. I mean, I'm thinking of like a dishwasher, like, uh, like or, or a uh, what is look, that, a binky if, for if, a baby. If, if, if Brad Williams <laughs> shaved his head. <laughs> This feels like an owl riddle. <laughs> Just <laughs> now. All right. So um... <laughs> they're that big, huh? By the way, see Brad Williams, Irvine Improv, October 11th. Yeah, that's right. I'll be on stage with him. I'll explain that joke. So, um, all right. This next clip, and I did a hard hitting expose on, uh, and just like that, Sex in the City re- reboot, whatever, about everyone's turning into a pussy. Oh, yeah, it's softened up for sure. And uh, it's getting super woke. Super woke. And uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's husband died, and now she's back with her old flame. Right. Whose uh, name is John... God, I was thinking... Corbett. Corbett. Yeah, you'll know the guy. From Northern Exposure. Yes, that's that's what... That's where I know him from. That's where John Corbett is from. Yeah. Yeah. He's not... uh, Aiden, that's what his name is on Sex in the City. Aiden, that's who he is, yeah. right? And so nice. they were. I'm married. He's he's gotten back with her. Yeah. And they took ten years off, and now it's love. Yeah. And they're both getting a little long in the tooth because her character's like fifty six, fifty seven. Sure. And but now they're going to spend the rest of their lives together. But he has three sons, and one of them's a douche named Wyatt who's 14 Ugh. and every this little snotty shit calls him every 10 minutes like dad where are you and he's like I'm in Manhattan with my girlfriend well dad I thought we were hanging out this I'm like oh, so he's God. a little piece of shit and so this guy uh this character Aiden is more every time his son calls he just pops he's in bed with sarah jessica parker but his son calls he just pops out of bed and starts putting his pants on and running for the airport to come to 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 stroke his son's head and, and soothe him is it because the son is like you know he's got sing, his dad's single dad doesn't have a mom he's got to play both parts or does a kid have a condition or a syndrome He's getting... He's just a needy little He's divorced. Yeah. He has a mom. The mom has custody half the time. And then the other half, he You're goes fine. to see Sarah and right. bang her in Manhattan. Yeah. 
But now we get to the very end of this season, and Sarah's just thrown her uh, big, big party, big dinner party. And the last uh, supper. John, who was not invited to the party, has showed up what? after everyone has left to explain. Now, his son got drunk, got into a car accident, got into the hospital, and he had to hustle back to take care of him. That's where we yeah. last left him off. Broke his collar. Broke At his 14, collar. Huh? What was he drinking? Uh, it was, well, beer, but it turns out they found other things in the system, as we're going to find out here. But he then shows up <laughs> after the party. And has to lay this on. This is the woman he was engaged to, and then she dumped him, and then she married Big, and then they stayed. But they've rediscovered each other after right. after a decade, right? And uh, now they're going to spend the rest of their lives together. She's going to be pseudo stepmom, I guess. Except too, right? for he's got this son. I'll tell you what. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll good play teaser. This, this clip. <clears throat> you know, I love me a good teaser. You know, you set it up and you give people a reason to stick oh, around. We got a Dr. Phil story too. Well, I'll tell you. Well, hold that <laughs> thought, Adam, because on today's show we've got someone. We've got someone who's got. Look, we've got someone with Down syndrome, but an upbeat attitude. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Just thrive. Oh, you got so much stress in your life. You just want to hit the pause button and breathe. Well, good news. Just Calm from Just Thrive can help. Just Calm's all-natural blend of mood-lifting, psychobiotics, and brain-nourishing vitamins and B vitamins as well helps you take back control and make you feel your most cool, calm, and collected self. Multiple studies. Prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little as four weeks. Or you can try Thrive Probiotic. Now, that's what I take every day. A spore-based probiotic that banishes gas and bloat so your gut can produce more serotonin, which is your happy hormone. It's your gut that's controlling your mind, people. Let's get the gut in order and the head will follow. Plus, it supports better sleep as well i know the owners of the company i've interviewed tina on this show been out to dinner with them they're passionate about this product so please please benefit from it it's just thrive right dawson with just calm and just thrive probiotic you'll have the ultimate stress fighting duo to help you feel cool collected and in control get 20 percent off your first 90-day bottle of just calm and just thrive probiotic today visit justthrivehealth.com and use promo code adam my mom crushed it, Ivan, I'm sure yours too. Stepped up, there's no rule book for the single mom uh, profession. You gotta just trust that your instincts are gonna carry you through each moment and challenge that presents itself. You're like, is this what the dad would do? I don't know, I'm playing both parts. My mom stepped up a lot. She bought me condoms, she thought that was the move. Was it awkward? Yeah, for sure. Was I nine? Yeah, almost. Were they magnums? Yeah, but she believed in me, and that's something that her, thank you. I love her too. I think she's a great lady, and she thought I could get halfway in there. Adam Ray is on the Adam Carolla Show. Show's coming up all over the place. You go to Adam Ray Comedy, and uh, you can find where it's going to be. All that, right. That clip is from a special I dropped on my YouTube. Adam Ray live from Portland at a place called The Get Down. Um, so you can check that out, and then get ready for the new one that I shoot this weekend in Madison. If you live in Wisconsin, come on over. Chicago, Milwaukee, we'll take all your boners. How long are you going? is the special slated to be? This one will probably be an hour and change. Okay, because I see a lot of people with half hour specials. The one I put up on uh, live from Portland is about thirty eight minutes. Uh huh. So yeah. there's no there's no real rules anymore. I don't think so. I, the amount of look, there's probably amongst all the comments and feedback, two people out of thousands that I've read that have been like, "What's with everyone doing these shorter ones?" You know what I'm saying? So it's it's all. But but you look, Krista Savano just put out a thirty minute one. I mean, there's you know they got the Netflix half hour. There's um I don't know for me also I I can't uh, unless it's maybe. A Burr or a Chappelle, uh, but even them all watching Dose. I just, I yeah. think everyone, there's too much to consume. There's too much going on. I like the shorter ones. Yeah. 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 And it's also like less is more. And I knew I was going to be doing this bigger one. So it was almost kind of a one to grease the wheels. And, um, and, and it uh, looked great and sounded great. And I was proud of it. And a lot of material that I wanted to kind of get rid of. And um, there are no rules. That is one thing to keep for what you do on the stage and what you don't do. I mean, you know, you see um, Hasan Minaj uh, getting a little beef for yeah, fabricating that. some stories. And it's like, yeah, man, I don't fucking, you know, Brad, Brad and I, when we do the podcast, 
he would, uh, you know, we'd end up, you know, running bits by each other. Or that was one of the best parts of doing it with him. Also, just so I could, you know, for diversity purposes, for me when I would, you know, post pictures, and so I would, um, what well, in some laughter, and so I uh, would uh, would hear a story from Brad, and I was like, I, afterwards, I was like, did that happen? He's like, yeah, pieces of it. Right. And then I took comedic liberties to kind of, but enough to to kind of build off it. Some people need more than a a, a smidgen of truth, and some, you know, I don't know. It's, well, where do you come down on that? I mean, maybe you just said where you came down on it. I, <laughs> When I first saw it, I'll be honest, my first thought was like, ah, because for me, I know personally, and again, it's all, everyone has a different approach to it. I, I even had somebody, I was doing some jokes uh, in Philly this last week and about, you know, some, some, uh, a bachelor party joke and then some m- joke about being you know married. And then I did some, a few older bits about playing Wolverine at Universal Studios. And some guy goes, is that real? And I go, yeah. He goes, oh, I just, I didn't know if you made that up. And I go, why would I make that up? And I go, oh yeah. So many people have never met someone who actually has been a theme park character. So it was probably like, I can't believe I was hearing some firsthand accounts. But for me personally, I can't talk about anything if there isn't a good, you know, I used to have this whole bit about my nieces, you know, asking me to kiss the boo-boo on their Barbie and my niece spread the legs open of the Barbie and was like, do it right there. And I'm like, now I'm like in this predicament. Do I not make my niece's favorite toy feel better? Do I eat out a plastic purse in front of a nine-year-old? But she was crying. So I'm like, you know, leave the room. Barbie's going to feel a whole better. Mm -hmm. It's going to take seven minutes or an hour and a half. Who knows what kind of a week she's had. (laughs) That really happened for me to at least be able to see and retell each time. Yes. I, I, for me again, I can't fabricate so much to where I'm up there. I, I feel in, um, you know, inauthentic and it just doesn't. So, so, but again, to each his own, if he, you know, I wish I had that ability to be able to fucking create this entire world and pass it off and stand up there and do that. But again, I don't think it's wrong. I just think it's another way to do it. Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, sometimes people say to me, did that story like really happen or whatever? And I go, how else would I have thought of it? Totally. Like, I couldn't even think of of it, yeah, I, my mind wouldn't go there. Well, see, and you're someone too that just had like you're truly speaking. You're as present and as from the core and the gut as it can be. So it's like I don't, you know, it's doesn't. I mean, wouldn't you feel the same way if you were up there and you had a whole story and you're like, wow, none of this is true, and I'm just getting them to buy into it? I don't know. Yeah, I, it so feels a little weird. I guess there's like two approaches. Um, one is a story, and you always end up embellishing it a yes. little bit and punching it up yes. and adding some stuff to it. So there's like sort of like half <clears throat> half the, the 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 impetus of it, the genesis of it always has to be true. And then this is a joke I do sometimes. So there's there's like a joke about um painting a graffitied cock on a mailbox that I found and then I went and told Jimmy about it and then he explain to me how it worked or something and it, it's verbatim explain it's, you how the it, cock works or how graffiti works is the the joke was i took a picture of it i went over to jimmy's house the following weekend we used to live next to each other up oh, on cool. the hill and i showed him the picture of the cock on the mailbox <laughs> and then because i thought i was being funny because it's jimmy you yeah. know i said in europe when they graffiti a cock do you think they leave it uncut <laughs> and, and, which I thought was clever. Sure. But Jimmy didn't, he took it as a challenge. And, and, and Jimmy's, uh, he can dig in, you know? And Jimmy just said right back to me, he goes, nah, draw him the same way. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, same way. And I go, how do, how do you know this, Jimmy? And he goes, because they never draw a limp dick. They only draw hard dicks. And when dick gets too messy and filled with blood, then the foreskin peels beyond the head and it gives it the illusion of a circumcised dick, yeah. even if it's uncut. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that something you were sitting on? Or is that when were you gonna share this yeah. info? <laughs> and what other juncture? And it was a <clears throat> but it was an absolutely like verbatim story that I could have never I could have never dreamt up a cock on a mailbox oh. graffitied right. and showing Jimmy and I could have, but they're sort of half jokes where I do do a joke once in a while about um, getting off an off ramp to do a podcast in Santa Monica and, and sitting there and seeing the a hobo like a six year old bum and he had a sign and it said, you know, deaf 
homeless, like please help. Mm -hmm. And I was like, deaf, never seen that on a sign. And then I like had some sympathy because I thought maybe he had a disability. And I just sort of looked at him and, and then the light changed and I drove off. But, but if I'm saying it on stage, I'll say, yeah, I called him over, yeah. had a few bucks for him, but thought, let me just test something out. Right. Honk the horn. He jumped. Right. Said, uh, right. you ain't deaf and I ain't dumb fucker <laughs> and pulled off. And, and it was like, that's the beginning of the joke, yes. but I sort of fab the second yeah, yeah. part of that the feels, joke. Right? That feels normal and acceptable. Yeah, and that's what Hassan said. He says that there, all these jokes and embellishments are rooted in, quote, emotional truth. Oh, and that's oh. how he did. But like, but people are upset because some of these stories and these jokes are like about people being racist towards him oh. or, and things like and that. that. And see, that's yeah. So emotional truth. He means like he made up these things that didn't happen to him to prove a point. But right. guess what? Here's what. Here's why I actually will now. You know, speak to this where it's like. You know, you're up there trying to like. You need to have somebody told me early on, and I was just kind of, I was maybe two years in the stand up, and he was like, "You're just kind of doing social commentary." He's like, "You don't have an emotional attachment to what you're talking about," which is the name of the game while you're up there. If people are going to try to, you know, connect and relate over what you're talking about, especially if it happened to you, there's got to be some emotional connection that they can, you know, feel and grasp to then go, "Okay, I know how he feels about this, so now I'll decide how I feel." But at least he's giving me a, a chance to to go on a ride here. And so if you're kind of um, creating that for yourself whether than versus actually experiencing it, but again, then you go, well, kudos to him for being able to pull it off, right? Like maybe, like you said, I could never fathom to create a uh, cock in a mailbox story, but then maybe you applaud the people that have the brain to make up all that shit and pass it off as real, right? Um, I, I, in general, don't like, I, I don't mind a, a, a made up joke, you know, just, just clearly it's just a joke yeah. you know uh i do this one where i go uh my cousin's a michael jackson impersonator mm. and he's because he's a little heavy set and he's older and he doesn't really dance and he doesn't just not doesn't sing he just does the kids part <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> now that's clearly just a made-up Joke. Yeah, like I don't funny. have a cousin who's a Michael sure. Jackson. Yeah, person. but that's but that's also that's I think that, different that's just than a, what he's. That's you just know. a joke. But I don't like when people tell the stories. I want the stories to be accurate. Does this like, feel comparable like to Steve Rain is easy and the whole nine eleven thing, or is that hmm, because that because again I, I don't know if you're making up things that were racist to you, then it's like well because again I go I, I didn't know that's what it was so I'm like. Oh, fuck, then it's, you're, I mean, because people are still believing it. They're like, yeah, you are a person of color, and these situations don't feel outlandish to have probably not happened, but they haven't happened. So you're saying, like, I, but then, but then, and, and then I go back to, again, the stage is the stage, use right. it for what you want. It's people want to be entertained, they want to be, they want to whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he says the punchline is worth the fictionalized premise. I, yeah, you can I mean, do whatever you, it, you can I, do I whatever that. you yeah, want. You I, I don't like the part if you're turning yourself into a, a victim of racism. If you're fabricating that, then that's that's a little dicey. That, that's why I brought up the 9-11 thing a little bit because I'm like, it feels a little like you're putting yourself in a position that didn't happen to you to get to I, get something. There's, right? a little, there's a little stolen valor there, perhaps. But know. all right. To to each their own. I don't. To each I don't their own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, like we, like we wouldn't have like if songwriting was the same thing. Like we wouldn't have any. Like so many songs would not have been written that we love and we connect with. I, I don't know. I just Look, think at the end of the day, Biden's still president. Epstein's still alive, and we'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> no, so we're all gonna die someday. Back to uh, uh, and just like that. So oh, good. <laughs> of course, good. <laughs> so now the dinner party's over. John Corbett, the long lost fiance, is back. And why wasn't he invited to the dinner party? Can I ask that? He will not, would not go into her apartment. He has uh, a mold allergy. Now, he, she broke up with him, moved into an apartment, and he just can't, he, he swore to never go in it. He, he was a conscientious objector to being at this place. I guess where she was fucking uh, Mr. Big or some, something like that. But he's now showed up. 
in person Oof. after the dinner party. Okay. Do you uh, do you want a drink? I have everything. Uh, yeah, maybe a beer. <laughs> everything but beer. Um, red wine? No, just... You have a drink. Why? Do I need a drink? Where's your luggage? Oh, I don't have any. Come sit. Uh-oh. Come sit is like close the door when yeah. your boss says that and you like, walk in his office. That's the relationship. Yeah. Come yeah. sit he is just a relationship the too. Or if you're Matt Lauer, you just hit the button. I don't have any because right. I got I to gotta go right back. Okay. He needs me. This guy's such a puss. <laughs> sure, of course. She is not buying well, of this. Of course, stay, stay down there with... With Wyatt, as long as you need. She's like, I borrowed Al's butt plugs. About. Time was going to get crazy, and you want to bounce? You know, back up here until you feel good. I don't think I can come back up. <laughs> what the fuck? What do you mean? He had psilocybin in his system. And a butt plug. Oh. Shrooms <laughs> and beer and, and he a car crash. He's trying to 14. catch all the Pokemon. Uh, where do you even get magic mushrooms oh fuck. in Virginia oh, no. who wrote that line he's a lot of Jesus Christ. Christ right but are you are you saying that that you're not gonna be coming back up here every other week like we've been doing here comes that music oh, yeah. listen to that music yeah. dude wait, Oof, wait wait piano hard piano chords yeah so not even when he's at Kathy's Kathy this happened while he was at Kathy's if the that's he step back to the right, that's mom. Because he wanted to be back home. What if instead of this music, it was the Mario Brothers uh -huh. theme <laughs> when you fall off the ledge? <laughs> bam, 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 bam. The other two are only <laughs> 17 and 20. <laughs> I mean, their whole lives, I've, I've been the constant. So he's got he's a proposal. He's not breaking up with China her. Oh, he's not? No, this has a positive ending. Yeah, great. With a boyfriend. I mean, I've, I've always been there. I'm. He's a dad. So this is a mind fuck. He's. I wish my dad okay. was one tenth well, as into me as this guy is. Oh, well, I, know I, could, I could come down there and um, spend time with you while you're there. Okay. You know, when you get a chance yeah. to get away. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, no, no. no I, I'd only be thinking of you. Well, all right. I don't <laughs> know. Okay. What, that, what does that mean? While while yeah. I'm getting my Are dick sucked by you, going right? To be thinking about me. <laughs> of course, I, I've been thinking of nothing but you. For all these years, mm. why can't she go to Virginia? Can we go back here again. Hey, no, no, no. We're not back. Hey, hey. We're not back. We're not here breaking again. up. I'm just saying, Gary. I never want to see you again. <laughs> what is this? Listen, look at me. Look. look, there's Zoom. The only <laughs> thing, the only thing that I love more than I love you is my boys. I made a commitment to them. But Isn't it I are my boys? You again? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I won't. Just give me some time. How, How much, much time? time? I knew she'd say that. <sighs> Till Wyatt's out of his teens. <laughs> oh, shit. That's six, six years. years. <laughs> it's five. His birthday's next week. <laughs> five oh, years. Whoa. Five years. Funny case, line. Remember case. Funny on line. Day when I said 10 years went by like... All right, hold it. Hold the phone. He's telling a woman <laughs> in, his, in her late 50s whose husband yeah. died 10 minutes ago, yeah. give me I will see you in March of 2028. Like... Tell a woman who's going to be in her mid sixties yeah. by goes, the when, time he comes back. He goes when Harrison Ford's eighty six. Give right. me, give me a call. Yeah, I'll see you in five <laughs> years, Manhattan socialite. Don't oh. fuck anybody yeah. new. All you wow. gotta do is just live that long. Just live that long. Yeah, and if my prostate doesn't explode, <laughs> and God willing, we'll be back together yeah. in a scant five and a half years. Yeah, if psilocybin doesn't take my family down. <laughs> I mean, we got psilocybin he's, margaritas being concocted as we speak. He's pitching this. Well, first off, she's like, well, then I'll just come out to Virginia and visit you since you want to be with your 
with your boy, and Great. he's like, I'd only be thinking of you. This guy's insane. What is that? Red flag. What does that mean? So he's like, don't come out, because I just rather, the memory of you is better than the real life version of you. Yeah, what's in the spank bank yeah. is a 31, <laughs> that's season two of oh Sex in the God. City. <laughs> that's now, crazy. I've got season two in my head. Your season eight, HBO Max, is right. not working out for me. Right. Oh, man. There's that's... been a lot of cosmopolitans between what's in my spank bank and too many cigarettes. Look, you and Matthew Broderick have gotten in some fights that have clearly taken a toll and <laughs> yeah. I'm not a fan. Right. And I gotta think I gotta look out for me in Virginia. Hey, it's there's a there's a lot of land, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of mushrooms. Mush I, by the way, that's a that's a very tone deaf line. Like I don't even know how he got mushrooms in twenty twenty three. Yeah. Where would a Where teenager do you even find beef jerky at a gas station? <laughs> what aisle is that on? <laughs> a teenager would get a hold of illicit drugs. Yeah. So um now okay. he, he Heartstrings tugged. She by the takes. Way. She's in on the plan. Yeah, the plan is: is I will see you in five years. She, I'm I'm 57, and I will see you when I'm 62. I'll just be celibate in Manhattan. By the way, these two are hot and heavy. They just rekindled the relationship yeah, after time. 10 years. This thing's only been going on about 10 minutes. Yeah, but they got a plan. It's just they're on the five year plan. Like just. Wait until my son completes his military training <laughs> 2041. Oh my God. When he's assigned to a SEAL team, then. He well, goes, first things first. He, like, goes, he goes, You've seen the movie Starship Troopers, right? So when bugs come down to attack us and we're defending them, and my son is a part of that army, then you know what? Let's pick up where we left off. Well, first off, son's 14. But he could find Jesus Christ at 16. Totally. And he be, needs to add that. Into he the could be on a Mormon mission at yeah. 16. He could be a straight edge guy. He could get some counseling. The original M&Ms. Mormon yes. missions. Really? Yeah. What? M&Ms, Mormon missions. Oh, really? The original M&Ms. Oh, the original M&Ms. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. It's a quick little throwaway joke. No, it's good. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it in. I think people should know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Because right now they think you're funny, but <laughs> no. All right, let's not get Meyer in the M and M joke. Are we, are when I'm, are we going to watch the rest of this? I, no? Listen, we don't. I think we need to. I mean, yeah. Is he? It sounds like he's just trying to break up with her. Like if you, well, watch, if you listen, watch this scene, I would say he's dumping her. Yeah. Uh, first off, I do not know a woman who I could put on the five year plan. I don't know. Did you? And look, and, and I think most women would probably. There's some that are like, well, I appreciate that he's giving me a plan. No, no, no. Not this plan. Yeah. But also, Th this is he, like, he's fucking somebody in Virginia, right? Yeah, yeah, because at some point, like. she'll, go, so apparent. she'll go, I'll bring the mountain to Mohammed. I'll come out to the Ooh, farm, no, Virginia. No, 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 no. You don't like the farm? Yeah. Come yeah. Every time I make you eggs, you say, God, I hate Virginia. Yeah, yeah. you're like Ava Gabor in Green Acres. You don't want to deal with this. <laughs> so humid. Yeah. So humid, yeah. I mean, that's, oh, that's the how this scene. mosquitoes during the summer. That's how this scene does get even more uh, hilarious is the uh, the doubling down of like the reasons to like, I'll just come there. Well, it's so far. And From also, New York, I can take a train. Well, you got to wait till the kid's 20th birthday. You got to wait till the kid's 20th birthday. Last I checked, 18 means you go off to college. Yeah. So he's at Syracuse and there's still an embargo on her pussy. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's living in a dorm at Arizona State, and she still can't make it out to Virginia? <laughs> Look, these things should all be discussed, yeah, right? I think so. Him and Kathy are still together. I mean, what about, all right, he's going to be 15 next week. All right, so he's going to get his learner's permit in mm. six months. Are you going to let him drive? Like, what happens when he gets his driver's license? What happens when he get, starts getting laid, gets a girlfriend? Like, wh wh when does this ever end? And it he doesn't. demands your full mental capacity. Like, he can't, I can't, I'd be thinking of you if you were there. Yeah, the lines aren't, yeah. I mean, whoever, they definitely wanted to not make him look great in this scene because these lines of, I mean, his justifications, or maybe it's supposed to be that, uh, you know, obviously terrible. I do, I will give him, you know, there's always the thing of like, he could have texted all this. So he, <laughs> he did it in person like a man, but also, mm. you know, maybe this was text worthy. Just like, also, I'd be thinking of you. That might, dot, dot, dot. Maybe that plays better than him being like, and you can't do it. I'd be thinking of you, babe. And also, what's going on with this airline? 
he's this magical airline where he shows up at midnight. Has I got no luggage? I got to go back. I got a flight to Roanoke. He got in, yeah. in the morning at two a.m. <laughs> like where are all these magical flights? The I last know. time here, his son. He's got to do better about where the bags go. His his son got <laughs> fucked up last time. It was twelve midnight. He just picked up the. He's like, uh oh. He kind of go. All right, I'm coming now. And he's like, I'm heading to the airport. Like. I don't know how many flights are leaving LaGuardia and, and, and heading to Roanoke. I, you, you, I think you got to book that shit. Suspect, yeah. Does the agreement sound like they're they're staying faithful? Like in this five years, like the the series ends with her and one of her Yenta friends on a beach in in uh, Greece, basically just pouring a martini and going, "Well, the five years will pass quickly." <laughs> we, are you we serious? Have an agreement. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Is there end of that? Does that scene? How does this scene? Well, that feels end? like because they're trying to set to it wait? up. They're setting up for another season, I guess. And it's her on the beach, and it's three years in, yeah. and she's met some pool boy, and and then Aiden goes, "I couldn't wait. I was thinking of you, like I said I would." And he comes out to Greece to find her, and she's with you know fucking Stamos' stepbrother, and she's <laughs> just you know slurping on you know yogurt and uh, and semen, <laughs> and they're having a great time. And fucking, you know, she's filming, you know, my big fat Greek wedding porn spoofs with this oh, new pool boy. Oh, in. He's yeah. In. He's and in then that. Aiden comes and fi- and walks in on them. And he's like, I thought you were going to wait. Uh, sorry, it's a yeah. bad impression. I mean, you wait. And then she goes, uh, she goes, well, I, you can't expect me to wait. I tried to. And then his girl that he was fucking in Virginia flies to Greece <laughs> and shows up. Oh, yeah, And then so they much. end up like becoming homies, Sarah Jessica and um, and the Virginia uh, floozy. And then Aiden. Oh, here's all right. Sorry to break, break. No, no, up I this, saw about this, two more episodes. Uh, so that was you were right to cut me. Possibilities. <laughs> and, and That's how you get four. me to watch. Yeah. <laughs> There's a writer's strike. But. <laughs> but uh, also, where are her? Uh, you can play this scene out. I want to see. I can't remember how this scene ends. Sorry. Till Wyatt's out of his teens. That's six years. It's five. His birthday's next week. Oh, five. It's only five years. Remember on Valentine's Day when I said 10 years went by like. He's a douche. Guy. Five years will go movie. by like. He didn't snap. He didn't snap. I know. Are you gonna snap them? Ooh. Oh, I did. It happened so fast, your eyes didn't even detect it. He's oh a my gosh. God. She's this a writer bad. by trade. She's not falling for this guy's bullshit. Yeah, this is bad. She's so a great. let go. Of what? Expectations. He doesn't seem bummed enough. What are you no, doing? Why is she ma- kissing making him? out with Yeah, this now. guy, by the way, I mean. Mm. All right, wait, this guy they, does this all. His, but here's his my chance. point: What they should have played Phil Collins one more night right there, and you, then cut to them just doing everything in the book. There's like nine <laughs> Kama Sutra books laid out, and she just goes fuck it. And then all of a sudden, the sun, minutes the sun comes in with like a ketamine smoothie, and he's just in the door, and he's like, <laughs> "You said you were coming to the hospital, Dad." <laughs> he, he, I don't know. Again, there's a strike. The <laughs> first off. Could you imagine Thinking out loud, yeah. her pitching this to her friends? <laughs> Wait, like, Sarah Jessica? Yeah. The yeah. final scene? Oh, her friends hate this guy. But they, they, oh, no. Okay, So yeah. she, Sarah would be like, I didn't get dumped. We're just taking a five and a half year break where I can't go to Virginia to visit him. Like, her friends would be like, are you fucking yeah. high? Kim Cattrall's like, honey, This guy please. was a rebound. Oh, and she's got a couple of new black friends who would never fucking put oh, up yeah. with this shit. They, they were in this sh- uh, this season for that specific reason. You were reason. told you're taking a five year break and you don't think you got dumped? This guy just dumped your scrawny That's ass. That's delusion. Do you think that? Do you think women appreciate or are uh, perturbed at how delusional they're making her? It's like, like the fact that she just kissed him was like, I guess I don't have any expectations anymore. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. And he was like, You get it? Yeah. Oh See, wait. I didn't how stop again. Jessica See how fast this? he goes. He goes. Wait. Wait. This would be great. Where he gives her a kiss and he goes. See, three minutes already went by. <laughs> Times that by five million, and I'll fucking we'll be fucking again. <laughs> I mean, like. And she's like, you're right. It's not that long. Yeah. By the time I go downstairs and get in the cab and cry on the way home, it'll have been almost a day. Five years for her is 2,700 Botox <laughs> treatments. That's how she measures That time. would have been a great line if he goes, think about how many times you're juicing up your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> times that by a million. We have, the, we have the scene where they say goodbye now, I think. Oh, this is great. Yes. They had Morning a night, after? They had a night of love. They're at her new place. She got a new place for him. Wait, she slept with him that night? 
Yeah, of course. I, I mean, think. I think yeah. heartbreak sometimes is an yeah. aphrodisiac. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Ask Taylor Swift. It turns yeah. me on, actually, yeah. Hey. No matter what happens. Poor choice of piano. This and this was not a mistake. Oof. Wow. She's, she's, she's a happen. sucker. She's a sucker. Yeah, this sucks. She buys she buys a brand new townhouse for she's the two to, to I live mean, she's in. She's so okay with this, and then she goes to the patio. She needs an intervention. Yeah. Oh. It was just too well, holding the cat. He's walking out to the town car. By the way, I don't know where this Who's guy gets his bread because he's like a humble. Oh no! He did the fake snap, and she. Oh, this is bad. The cat should have jumped off the fucking balcony and, and clawed him. him in the face. That's right. And then she just goes. And she does the fake snap back and just, you know, and that's how you end it. Now, she ends up on a beach oh, in furious. Greece, like telling her friend, like, yeah, all right, back to our single lives, but then I'll see him in five years. I'm telling you, set it up for the next and season. And look, Wyatt life. may turn out to be full Hunter Biden junkie. You Wait, know what I mean? Like, this, this, is a, this guy ain't going away. Wait, I, gotta, I don't care if he magically turns 19 and three quarters. All of a sudden, he's not a junkie anymore. This is a full-time job for this dad. I got a plot twist. Okay, good. Timothy Chalamet plays Wyatt. And mm. in five years, he's 19. And Timothy Chalamet will look 13 because he's Benjamin Buttoning right. right in front of our eyes. Right. This kid gets older but gets younger at the same time. He plays Wyatt, shows up in Greece to go, my dad really needs you he's so sad he fucked up there's a scene where, where timothy Chalamet goes he fucked up and you and we all sit there going was he directed to deliver the line that way or was that a chalamet choice submit that Ooh. for the emmy right submit that for he fucked up and you laugh and you go i don't know if that was an intentional comedic moment but i love chalamet in this part Wyatt tries to convince sarah jessica come on back and she's like i just don't know and he's like and it's late did you get a room no i didn't all right, well, you can crash on the couch. And the couch turns to a bed, and the bed turns to an asshole. And wow. they start banging it out. Mm. Cocktails are flowing. Lips and juices are being exchanged. And Aiden shows up, like I said in my earlier pitch, the next AM. Mm-hmm. Okay? Not PM. AM. And he's got flowers, which is hilarious. Mm. Come all that way, you think oh. flowers is going to fucking, you know, yeah. patch things up. and a week. And Chalamet's got one arm, and they're maybe they're spooning, maybe they're doggy spooning. Mm. Something's happening, but they're right. inside of each other, and Aiden's mm-hmm. got to separate them. Yeah. Again, there's a the strike hose. going on, so I'm just thinking out yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But, you but know, most of this is usable. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm with you. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. Because, I mean, this is popcorn, gossipy, water. Like, the way that this is ending, I'm now understanding, is like, they want people to almost hate watch this show. Yeah. And be like, at least I know that from my wife, who was all about it. And she's conferred with other, um, you know, uh, fans of the program where they're like, it's so fucking whatever. But they watch it because they're like, it's got to get better. And they're like, fuck this. But they're talking about it. Yeah. Look at us. We spent 20 minutes on it. Yeah. I I was going to watch the finale. (laughs) Don't need to. But guess what? Can't wait for the next season. All right, my old partner, Skip Bedell, that everyone loved from Catch a Contractor, is going to come in here and rehash some old times. Tell us, uh, he's got a very interesting life story, and we'll do that right after this. Morgan and Morgan, let me lay a stat on you. People 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all the age groups. Oh, man, my kids are in that age group. Now I'm worried, but thank God there's Morgan and Morgan. If you're ever injured, you can uh, check them out. Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, more than 800 lawyers, more than 15 billion recovered for 300,000 plus clients. Morgan and Morgan has proven that they have a track record and they will fight to get you the full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for people for over 35 years. Racing my vintage cars is hard, but submitting a claim for Morgan & Morgan is easy. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law pound 529 from your cell phone that's for the people.com slash adam or pound law pound 529 from your cell this is a paid advertisement 
Skip Bedell, my little partner in crime, is in studio. Skip uh, has a very interesting story. Good to be reunited with uh, the super authentic Skip Bedell. Great to be here, man. Thanks for having me back, Ace. My my pleasure. Um, Skip's stories is pretty inspiring. He's told it to me before, but uh, I talked to him last night at dinner. I I like your humble Home Depot story. Yeah, man, it's um, it's, it's it, it is definitely a, a story of being humble. You know, before you and I had gotten into doing stuff on Catch a Contractor, which is such a cool project, right? Um, you know, I've been building houses for a couple decades, and third generation builder, grandfather, father, both uh, carpenters and home builders. And business was booming, man. We, we were busier than we could ever imagine and turning stuff away. And then all of a sudden, like 2007 rolls around and the economy falls out. And mind you, at the time, I'm doing remodeling. Like, I'm, I'm not building new homes. I'm doing remodels. And most of these are like, you know, pretty fancy high-end houses, people that want like a nicer kitchen or a nicer bathroom or whatever, right? Well, the phone just stops ringing because those folks, now they're upside down on the mortgage on their high-end home, right? When the economy, the whole banking thing went through. And I uh, had to lay everybody off and tool belt back on and, you know, and uh, back out on the job sites. And to offset the difference of, of uh, you know, the, the money and everything, I took a nighttime job, which I, I don't remember ever punching a clock or taking. I always, always ran my own thing, you know, did my own thing. So um, that Home Depot, I was in there every day, probably three or four times a day, getting materials for my jobs and kidding around one day. The manager of the store says, man, you know, I think you know this store better than the people who work here. If you ever need a job? And I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I'm never going to come work here for you. About a year later, I'm like, hey, Pat, uh, remember that time? you were talking about the job so p.s i take the job at night working like full time with you know doing a 40 hour week but from 2 to 11 after i'm wrapping up my construction gig in the daytime and um it was what i had to do but every day i got there and i'm punching this clock and it was like humble pie man i'm like what the fuck happened to my life Ka-chunk. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, time goes by, and I have to tell you, everything that has happened in my life after that, I honestly can trace back to the Home Depot. So in comes this super hot chick, right? It's a customer walks in the store. Here I am standing in the ever alluring orange apron, right? Like, what's not sexy about that? And she comes over to me. We start talking, and fast forward the tape. She's now my wife. Fourteen years later, um, the best thing that ever happened to me. I met her in that store, and I wouldn't have met her if I didn't have who you know was the, you know on our show with us. We catch a contract with the lovely Allison Bedell. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I, I was inspired by the story because. It's the hardest thing to do in life is to kind of step backwards, yeah, you man. know, and if you hang around long enough, you're going to take a couple of backward steps. And when you go, I used to live in a Home Depot, too, when I was running jobs, but you always had a certain degree of sympathy for people who work yeah, there. Right. Because you're like, these losers <laughs> exactly. are out, they're here counting plywood, but right. I'm actually on a job you know, using this stuff right. and the notion of being employed there, even though, I mean, it's the same relationship you have with the Starbucks, you know, you go in and get your coffee, but you don't have dreams about being on the other side of the right. counter. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> making me a scum, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it was interesting. It, it's, it's humbling, but two things, you know, reality on reality's terms, this yeah. is what's going on. You need a job. You got commitments, you got bills, you have to, you have to pay them. Yeah. And, Everything comes from something else and you never know where it's going to show up. And so there's experiences that you think are bad, but they're never really bad when you step back, you get a little distance and you look at it. But I always say change is never bad if you get some distance from it. It's yeah. bad in the moment. In the moment, it can seem like it, it really does suck. I say this to my son all the time. And I said, you know, everything you do, today is like what's going to get you to the next thing you're going to do tomorrow and you have to go through that process and at the time all i can see was putting on the apron and punching the clock i'm like what happened man but uh, concurrently with that i'm going through a divorce because uh, lo and behold when the market fell out and the shit hit the fan uh you know it things just all of a sudden suddenly doesn't work out anymore what do you mean we're not taking three vacations a year right i take the job and uh it was the best thing i ever did like not only meeting my wife but um so many other opportunities came up up and like connecting the dots probably wouldn't have done catch a contractor with you 
uh, had I not done that because all my TV stuff came from working in that store that eventually led up to a casting thing that, you know, we, we got together in, with that show. And I'm, I was talking to Allison about this the other day. I'm like, you know what? I don't, I, I, I might be doing a totally different thing. I might be a, a totally different place right now if it wasn't for that job that I hated so much. So Can I ask something? Did you give a, because Home Depot feels like, you know, the backdrop for an erotic film I may or may not have rented. <laughs> yeah. And I, so I feel like the pickup lines, whether it was intentional or not, and the uh, early dialogue you and your wife had, was it, would you make any sort of, if you're trying to flirt and put a little extra on it, was there any sort of Home Depot puns or yeah, play on words? There was. Yeah. There so was. so it's interesting go. that you said that. So so she, she, obviously, if you ask her, she'll tell me that she, you know, she scoped me out, right? And so she actually made herself available where I was. And it came up and, uh, you know, me just being the, the guy that would ask if you need any help, is there anything I can help you with? And we're walking around and she's, we're in the, I don't know, the plumbing aisle. And I'm, well, what do you need? She's like, well, well, you know, I was thinking about doing this and I show her what she asked me for, but she doesn't put it in her cart. And then I'm like, well, you know, so anything else going on in the house? Yeah, well, you know, as a matter of fact, I was going to paint this room. So I take her to the painting department and show her everything she asked for, but she doesn't take anything. And then this is going on for about 45 minutes, like literally. And at some point- Is that point, normal or is that a, more oh, no, than a Oh no, of course customer. not, no. Yeah. I mean, if, if someone asked me for something, I'm yeah. like, they're going to take- it like what I, Like, yeah. So yeah. now I'm realizing she's pushing the empty cart and we're an hour into this conversation. And I look at her, I'm like, nah, Ha. I'm like, this chick is like trying to like, like. Right. so I said to her kind of with a smirk on my face. I'm like, is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe and, a uh, phone number or a cheesecake yeah. factory dinner. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all of a sudden, like the light bulb just went off and I'm like, wow, man, I don't, I don't know that I was there. like, usually we're doing the ones pursuing, right? Totally. Like just, she's working me, man. Yeah. She was working me, but not taking anything that I'm saying to get. So I'm like, holy shit, look at this. So I pull out my, uh, the business card for my construction company. You know, I'm like, well, if you, you know, if you need anybody to help you with it, here's my, here's my number. Perfect. And it was like, what an easy segue. Yeah. And you know, it's like, honestly, dude, it was like the coolest. It would, we, we have one of those love at first sight that we actually really had a thing. So here's what happened. I actually got fired from that job because of her, because she would come back literally every single day to see me and walk Distract, me around yeah. the store to talk to me, but never leave with anything. <laughs> so there's the guys in the, there's, the, window shop yeah, all day? there's the guys in the store. Every Home Depot has LP guys. So there's plain clothes, they're loss prevention. And they basically, they, they sit in a little closet and watch a million monitors and they also walk around around the store behind you as you're shopping, pretend they're shopping, but they're really watching you. And sometimes they're looking through the shelves into the other aisle Whoa. to see who's shoplifting. So the LP guys brought it to the manager's attention that you know every day this woman comes in, but she never buys anything, and he spends like two hours with her. So they <laughs> actually fired me from the job. But that was after we got caught making out in the rug aisle. That was gonna be my <laughs> next question. Yeah. Which <laughs> aisle and what yeah. were you doing? So two aisles, we actually got busted. The in. rug two to, aisle. Yeah. Yeah. Offers like, a, a certain degree of privacy. Yeah, if you man. Open, they're up on these big yeah. frames. You swing them open. You slide in. Now, yeah. please tell me absorption. You, please tell me when you got in that alley, you were like, "Now we're surrounded by rugs. Do the carpets match the drapes? Did you say anything?" Yeah, yeah. I, a lot of thoughts went through my yeah, mind. Yeah. You yeah. go yeah. full. Do all. You go like pita bread. Yeah, you slide right in. <laughs> go in there and like those things fold. And they're all right, like yeah. ten yeah. feet high. So you pull the two doors. Wait, together. you were in between a rug. Yeah, yeah. man. We got wow, that's so you know hot, you can you can flip through the rugs like like pages on a book. Yeah. So we got in between them and closed the rugs. Yeah, so good for you, dude. Well, I also did that in the door aisle, like where they have the storm doors. You could do the same thing with the demo, the displays. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, one day God. we're in there, we're literally making out. By now it's about a month down the road, and like you know, we're obviously the you store's know, so big. By the way, you're an idiot if you're not taking advantage of how like labyrinthy. There was so is. there's so many places where yeah. you could just like get it on. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> so we're in the rug aisle, and I got the rugs pulled together, and like my store manager, who's a total douchebag, he's been like trying to find a way to. To fire me, he literally just rips the rugs open. He's like, aha! <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, you know, like tongue is fully inserted. Like oh, we're we're, we're going yeah. at it. No, we know hard. how making that works. Yeah, yeah. yeah for still sure. clothes on, but it was like we're we're uh, we're hot, hot and heavy in the rug aisle. Wow. Answer me this: if this, if this is too personal, you don't have to answer. It, but is there a moment where you're like, I'm willing to lose my job to just fucking go to town here? Oh yeah, at that point, I fucking hated that job so much as it was. I didn't need any reason. I'm like, please fire me, please, for the love of yeah. God, fire me. <laughs> what can I do to get fired? You're yeah. reminding me of a, an That's exact amazing. opposite story. I had at Home Depot. <laughs> exactly that. I was videotaping a couple of your, in the paint aisle. Yeah. I used to have uh, Dr. McDreamy lived up the street from me when I lived up in the Hollywood Hills. Dempsey. Pat Patrick Dempsey. Wow. Nicest guy in the world. Also a handyman of sorts, yeah? 
Uh, not so much. So right. he to come he used to the bug, ladies, yeah. He used to bug the shit out of me. Can I borrow the screwdriver? Can I borrow the cordless drill? Can I borrow this? He was always working on his house. He was always borrowing tools. And like one afternoon, I was just like, we're going to Home Depot. You're going to get a shopping cart. You're going to push it. I'm going to throw shit in it. And whatever I throw in it, you're buying. Oh, and wow. that's what you're going to have now. And he just <laughs> pushed this cart. There's this mean McDreamy. And I was like, T-square. All right. 25-foot tape. Uh, we'll get you a... A construction pencil. You don't need, you know, you don't need a, a jigsaw, but a orbital sander will work. And I just kept <laughs> throwing shit, basically the shit he was borrowing for me. Let me throw in some of Al's world famous 1979 dildos. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And we just filled them up. And we just went went home. But as you were talking about Allie pushing around an empty cart yeah. for an hour, yeah. I was thinking about my date with Dr. McTree, <laughs> which oh, is was. exactly the opposite. And this, the, uh, the guy was in charge of Loss, the secret shopper guy. Yeah, he yeah. fucking probably had a boner oh, with shit. me and oh, Patrick yeah. Dempsey oh, yeah. in there, and just throw. I just was throw, every every yeah. four well, it's made dreamy, and get, you're too. buying stuff. So yeah, this is like that's a double, hysterical. So I'm guessing win. no making out in the rug aisle with the, at, at any point. <laughs> no, well we went we went into the. Uh, we went to the yeah the door department where they have the same yeah, the yeah, same thing yeah. with a higher degree of privacy. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, he wasn't so you really were in the back closet. Then. <laughs> this is pre this is pre McDreamy. Wow. Yeah, he was kind of out of work, kind of ripping bong loads and hanging with his could... Rhodesian Ridgeback in <laughs> his rented place in Hollywood Hills. I don't know if oh I can place God. a Dempsey program or mo- I mean maybe I th- maybe there's like some rom coms he farted around in, but like yeah. Well, it seems I, like Grey's Anatomy took him Here's to how you know he wasn't a highly sought after actor. He was with me <laughs> at Home Depot <laughs> at noon on a fucking Wednesday. Instead of like audition. Like oh, just, I, he wasn't planning on going to Home Depot. I just went to his house <laughs> oh, and went to get in the car. God. And he listened to you, yeah. What better place to be, though, right? Yeah, he had, That's he funny, did a bunch man. of movies and then he yeah. cooled down a little bit. Yeah. In the, you know, 99, 2000 in there and then caught on after that. So yeah. Skip, uh, Skip, I always appreciate it because... Um, it's a great story. Skip knows oh, thanks, the stuff. I, I I cannot stand the guys that don't know their business and the Hollywood types don't know anything about home improvement. So they don't know Ty Pennington doesn't know shit about anything either. And then they try to pitch it like this guy's an expert. And I, I, I tell people all the time, it's not about being handy. It's about all the codes and the regulations. And yeah. You don't know what a ring shank nail is just because you're handy, or you don't know what a nailing schedule on Shearwall is, or what OSB is versus you know, you know CDX plot. You, you don't know. You have to know all this stuff. Yeah. The only way you know it is if doing it for a living. Like yes. you have to do it right. full time. But I met Skip, and I was like, this guy's the real deal. Yeah. It was interesting though too, man. When we first met, he was like Ace was putting me through the ringer, man. Like, it, like we we would be on set, like live filming with a whole camera crew surrounding us. And yeah. He'd be like, "Hey, man, what's the uh, setback on that uh, inch and three eighth door uh, when you're mortising the hinge?" And I'm like. Nobody else knows this answer but me. And I'd tell him, and he'd be like, all right, yeah, right, right. And then at lunch one day, he's like, you know what, man? You actually know your shit. Wow. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's fucking what I do for a living. Yeah. I better, but yeah. I'm not going to eat. <laughs> yeah. Skip. Now, did, were you so like taken aback because you've just been around enough people, especially if it's maybe on a, a show type setting, that don't know? Or were you just trying to make, just make sure that he had his... Uh, you know, I, all the info. I've been told way too many times that this guy's an expert gotcha, at yeah. this, or you'd love this guy. Yeah. He knows all about construction. Yeah. And like I interviewed Ty Pennington once, and I was just like, what's the standard height of an interior door? Six eight, eight oh, 80 inches, six eight. And he's like, oh, I don't know. They vary. You know, it's like. A, the, the, oh, no, he didn't no, even no. say, I don't know. He tried to like. He, he, I asked him what fucking layout was. Layout is either sixteen on center or twenty four on center. Right. When you when you're framing, framing he yeah. didn't fucking know what layout was. Like right. it's, it's the first thing you would learn on a construction site. He didn't know anything, oh, and so man. I'd been burned a few times. Yeah, and I was going to be hooked up to another pretty boy, you know, <laughs> who didn't know jack shit. So I, I was some rug maker. I, I had to oh, I had to shit. test skip, make sure the he, show yeah. pony as he, you put he knew. it. Right? I call him the, the show he pony. Did. Well, yeah. that's another story which I want to get to, but <laughs> Skip was not. He didn't have a lot of experience on camera. 
Right. And did a couple commercials. That was about skip. It. Commercials for what? Like just like building products and things yeah. like that. You know, right, right on the cue. Show. Where I go. Skip yeah. wasn't a savvy show when he knocks his microphone <laughs> over. Like, okay. I mean, here's my point. As here's you can see, point. it's my first time I run a mic. The funniest thing ever. So these these contractors would show up. Skip. Skip would get. Skip. Skip would 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 spread out. He'd spread his lats out. He saw corner, that, right? He'd corner like, these like, guys. Boom! Like Skip's like, I'm gonna get these guys, and Skip would really have ire for these guys. Whereas yeah. I always felt sorry for him because they reminded me of all the assholes I worked with mm. out here. But yeah. oh, the guys I went to high school with were right. essentially these guys. Right. But Skip, Skip, and Skip would come on, come at them and corner them, you know. But they would always, the cameraman would always tell Skip. You can't turn your back to the camera and hide this guy. Your lats are so wide. You're so much bigger than this guy that we can't see the guy. You have to kind of stand open. You know, in show business, you cheat. You yeah. know, you sort of cheat open out this camera. way. You yes. cheat out that when you sit yeah. too close to each other and shit like that. And uh, my memory of Skip was always the cameraman while he was filming and Skip was screaming at the contractor, his other hand would come out and grab Skip's shoulder yeah. and start to open him up. Yeah, like just and off start, camera, the camera guy yeah, would be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. guy's hand, like trying yeah, to open up. Fine. And Skip would open up, <laughs> yeah. and then Skip would get pissed off. Oh, God. Like, he, he'd, he'd go, you know, he, the guy would say something, like uh, about his mom or about uh, his kids or something, and Skip would go, you worried about, these kids are living it, and he'd get pissed off, and he'd close off again. He'd start, <laughs> yeah. cor- he'd start cornering the guy again, oh, and yeah. then the cameraman's hand would go out yeah. again and yeah. start moving Gently him back did, out of the way. Remember they made like a perimeter, like a thing on the floor? I don't know if they used a piece of cord or something. It was like, don't leave this box. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, the show was real. Oh, it was man. all it was as as it real. was. As it gets, dude. That was the beauty of that show, honestly, because, you know, over the years, people said, oh, the show's got to be fake. I mean, who would do that? How are you going to get these guys to come on the show? And I'm like, listen, man, this is the most uh, unscripted reality show. It's it's the most real reality show that exists because we honestly didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. Like, we'd get in these rooms, especially the Sting scene, like Sting Day. We would just pray that it would go go well. And sometimes right. it didn't. Like there were some some episodes that never even made the air because wow. like it just they were like the real deal. Wow. Yeah, it was it was crazy, man. But what a cool time, right? Yeah. My daughter, not a huge fan of the show, because I said to her last night, I go, I'm oh, heading, I didn't know that. I go, I'm heading out. What? <laughs> and she goes, Okay. I go, going to dinner. She goes, Oh, who are you going to dinner with? I go, Skip Bedell, my old partner from Catch a Contractor. She goes, What's that? Oh come I on. Go, it's a TV show. Natal- I was on. What? And she's like, Oh. <laughs> wow! Yeah, <laughs> pay for that room you're in. I remember she watched that shit when she was a kid. But Sonny I, remembers. Too. Sonny, yeah. Sonny, Sonny knows. So yeah, uh, yeah. So Skip, Skip's story is a really interesting one as well. And you didn't tell the story about uh, being adopted and about how um, you found your mom and, and all that stuff. Yeah, like, it's a really cool story. Well, that's the other side of, like, to keep it short, I know we got time here, but that's the other side of Home Depot, right? So, again, I wouldn't have met my wife. And when I met my wife, she's in law enforcement, and she's a professional investigator. Like, that's what she does. Whoa. So I had been looking for my birth parents for about 30 years because my, my adopted parents always told me, since I was a little kid, so my earliest memory is, like, them telling me, you're really lucky because you were adopted by parents who really wanted to have a child but couldn't and so I felt super special and fortunate and it wasn't like a traumatic experience. what do you mean I'm adopted to me it was the best thing ever but I always felt like there was something missing there was some part of me like you're the most inherent thing we have other than like breathing air is like like your mother the first thing you look at when you open your eyes is just sure. see your mom right? right so there's always a p- piece of me that I think that was missing so as I got older, I'm like, I want to pursue this, but it's a dead end, man. Like, especially, I don't know about from state to state, but the, the records are sealed. Essentially, if you're adopted, you can't find out. Like, oh, the, my sister did it. It took uh, almost 20 plus It's years, very, yeah. very hard. And I, I started the process and went to court and petitioned the court and blah, blah, blah. And it got slammed the door in my face. I quit 10 times. And finally, I'm like, you know, fuck it. I guess I'm just never going to know. Because if I don't find out sooner or later, she's going to be dead. Yeah. You know, she'll eventually just expire. So I meet my wife. And then, like, within a year, she finds my mom. Hmm. And. And it was like, holy shit. Like, and I met her. Was she working like, at Home Depot? I, 
Yeah. No, she no. does not work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's in the but rug so, department. Yeah, she was, yeah. She was, she's not in the garden department. Yeah. Charge so cleaning I, the rugs. I, I still, <laughs> yeah. Skip the files every Tuesday. My, my, my mom is like, it's awesome, man. She, you know, it's like, I'm now, so now I, I, I speak with her literally every day. It's wow. like she's been my mom my whole life. Wow. Amazing story. Like, I'm actually holding back tears even thinking about this right now because it is literally an amazing story. And then come to find out, I have sisters and brothers and all, like, you know, after she had me, when she was a teenager, when she had me, un- unwed, in high school, whatever, it was a smart thing to do. And I finally got a chance to ask her, so mom, what happened? Like, what, how did I want to be? And she's like, you know, I was 17 and, you know, we weren't married. And back then you either got a divorce and, you know, she's uh, not divor- uh, an, an abortion. And, and of course I didn't want to do that. Or, you know, you adopted. Wow. And so she goes, I thought you would have a better life. And, and I had a great life. I was fortunate. I had a great upbringing and great parents. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have learned all my stuff about construction. Totally. My whole life would be different. Yeah. Right? So now I finally get to meet this woman because of my wife, because I was in Home Depot. Yeah. I'd still be looking for my mom. Yeah. I met my brothers. I have two brothers that are a couple years younger than me. We're best friends. I talk to them every day. Like, so I know them now for six, going on seven years. I have this whole family that I still would not ever have met if I had not have taken that job. And then so- yeah, that's- you and I wouldn't have done catch a contract because all the stuff sure. I did on t- my commercials and stuff came from Home Depot. And because I would, did those TV commercials and put them on YouTube, some casting agent found me and asked me if I want to do this show. Mm. We wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for that fucking job. So crazy. Well, just to be fair, <laughs> yeah. the Home Depot Adam, theme Adam's song, I feel like I would have been all... fine. Yeah, yeah, I would have hooked, would... <laughs> would hooked up a Ty Pennington, <laughs> probably done a fourth season. Yeah, man. <laughs> probably. But what, Wait, what, what did your wife do that was special about uh, her investigation versus what the. Uh, she was just able doing. to open some doors that, like, uh, me on my own couldn't do. So being being investigated. Investigator, she had you know connections in the court system and people, other investigators that okay. have that have ways of finding yeah. shit on it. Like when you go on a police computer, there's information on the you and I will never see. Like she could find shit, and I'm like, this is crazy. What was the first thing? And again, if it's too personal, you don't have to answer. But yeah. like when you first con- connected with your mom, like was it? It was over the phone or real life? Did you it was. Meet? It was over the phone. And then was it? What's the? How, what? How's it was not first? good. It yeah. wasn't good. No, I, I was scared to death to call her because I was afraid of rejection. So my, I had Allison call her, and my mom's like, uh, she was just quiet. Like she's like, listen, I, I know it's going to sound crazy, but like you know, I'm married to your son, and he wants to see you. He doesn't want anything from you because that's always like the biggest question. Right? Yeah. There's, there's some drug addict guy, whoever was like wants some money or something, yeah. right? Like yeah. it wasn't that. It was just like he just was been looking for you his whole life, wants to meet you, and she was like. Like, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. She's like, I have oh. a. She's like, it's, it's it's not. I don't. It just doesn't. Did fit. you hear this on speaker? Or is your wife relaying? I didn't this to even you hear it. She told me, I and mean, she hung up the phone. And she's like, she doesn't want to do it. Oh and it, it, man! It destroyed After me. After all the searching, it destroyed. It's like me. Indiana Jones getting to the very yeah. end, and he picks up the grail. Yeah. And some guy goes, "That's a fake one, man. Yeah. The real ones in <laughs> yeah. fucking Denmark." So, not to make it depressing, but I, the reason why she said that, and I found that later on, and eventually she agreed to meet me, was because I found that I had four siblings, uh, a brother and, and and three sisters, and a few of them had already passed very young like my brother Sean who I never met died in a motorcycle accident at 23 my sister uh, died of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma at like 32 so she lost all these kids and her husband had recently died right before this phone call Mm. and eventually she said you know what I just have had too much loss so if I come to meet him now and it doesn't work out she goes I just can't take anymore so she was like just wishing well and tell him I'm sorry I can't do it. So my wife being the persistent maniac that she is and yeah. Adam will agree she's pretty persistent. She's like look he doesn't want anything he just wants to meet you just just have lunch with him and and so we met and it was it is we just hugged it out and wow. she's like I'm like what happened and she told me and and she's like I've been you know I've thought about you every day in my life but I just I knew you were better off without you know, without even knowing how many who years I ago or, was this? I met her uh, almost nine years ago now. Wow! Yeah, that was a right when we were right when we were. Sh- well, if you the recall, show. I had my sister, one of my sisters, Shannon, her her daughter, came out and spent yeah. a few days with us on the set, and I had just met her, like you know, just right before that. So, wow! Uh, yeah, yeah, that's bonkers. Yeah, dude. it was, dude. It, it is seriously the craziest story ever. Changed my life. Like I literally wouldn't be sitting here talking with you guys if, if all that didn't happen. And my whole career changed. So you know, just all the stuff I do now on TV would wouldn't have happened. Like you know, it's like it's yeah, crazy. Well, it's always I you wonder, you know, 
connect the dots, you know? You, and know, you can't be mad at your mom for, for like, oh, I'm no. sure there's no apology on her end when you meet because no. you're like, well, at least you chose to not abort me, right? Exactly. I guess, like, even yeah. though, because that could have been your move to be like, I can't re be responsible right. for this life, so I'm not even going to deal with it. Yeah. But to be like, well, let me like put it in the hands of someone who will, you know. Yeah, she know. she made a great decision, and thankfully, and, and I was very fortunate. You know, I wound up with a great, great family, and you know, just I, I got really, I got really fortunate. Will she know? meet your birth parents or no? Is that both of my? Um, no. No, so my adoptive parents yeah. have both passed. Sorry, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So no, okay, she had, okay. she's never met them. I wish she could have, because my dad especially was man. He was just one of those dudes you'll never forget. He was like a special guy. Like wow. he'd give you the shirt off his back. He was just the kindest, the most genuine person ever. And I had a great relationship with him. But uh, he he just got old and sick, like we all do, and yeah. eventually passed on. But he like I just missed it. Like he could have met her a few Oof. years later, and yeah, it's like timing, ah, right? Man. Fuck. Yeah, she would love him. But um, I'm fortunate, man, because I get to hang in. And she was young. She was only 17. So. So, you know she's in good health and hopefully we'll we'll spend a lot of years together so i feel like we're catching up now you know there's also holograms you know you could get like i don't know with yeah. the two how many holograms, holograms has of your, one of those uh, at a shop yeah is there a way to get like AI holograms stuff, of your yeah. um adopted pit? like you know what i'm saying i'm just trying yeah. to think of a way to get them I, to actually meet I, yeah. I, I gotta i gotta tell you at kimmel's comedy club which i just got back from mm. he has the full hologram of him down oh, wow. in the lobby. Is it Howie's contraption? Like talking. It's like Howie's things. It's full size. You know, welcoming you, can, you to the club. Yeah, but just whatever. But whenever I go down after a show and I'm <laughs> signing books and having a drink after the show, I'll turn around and see full size Jimmy standing there. And I always go, like, oh, oh. He's That's talking. Cool. Like, it, it, it bumps me. Wow. All right. We're also here. Uh, Skip's got a, a plug, and that plug is uh, something he talked to me about, but it's something off the air but something I, I really feel strongly about and it's a, a product that he's endorsing king water filtration yeah man. And, and i i you know there's a, there's an intro there's a bunch of interesting things going on one is is i am i i'm driven insane by the amount of plastic that people are using and drinking out of and and whatever i have i have a bottled water at my house in a glass bottle i'm the only person i know gets five gallon water bottles glass because because mm. i like it so much yeah but the thing that i was talking to skip about was just interesting so this is like a whole house filtration system but stuff like taking a steam shower yeah. so you everyone is nuts and meticulous about the water they put into their mouth yeah, right? right like it has to be filtered it has yeah, to be we'll mountain drink, water it's got to be heavy on alcohol, not gonna right. drink then you go take a steam shower, you take a hot shower, and you're in this lucite case, and you're just all the steam. You're just inhaling all the steam. Your your body, your skin's one big pore. It all just yeah. absorbs yeah. the water. So That's right. you're you're super meticulous about drinking the water, but you're in a bathing in the bad stuff and absorbing mm. it. Yeah. So I, I was horrified to find out this information uh, when I started really digging deep into the water stuff. You know, and especially over the past few years, we've seen all kinds of crazy shit where you really, you know, you wonder, is things really what they what they say they are, right? So, you know, the water that we drink, is it as safe as we think it is? And you see it in the news all the time. It's, you know, lead and mercury, all these things are in the water, right? But you don't think about those things like what you just mentioned as i start doing the study to find a water filter for my house and like everybody i had a britter right i would only drink that mm -hmm. i'm good like you know i see in the, the news all oh, this lead in the water there's contamination i'm thinking in my mind i'm good because i don't drink the water from my faucet if you were to go to someone's house and said hey do you want you want something to drink and they ran a glass into their kitchen faucet you'd probably be like ah you got a bottle yeah You're like if right. you just totally. inherently you just think right yes. this is, so um i'm like you know i never really thought of filtering all of it and um as i'm doing these studies i find out our skin is the largest organ on the human body it's like a giant sponge and like adam said it takes in everything so all these contaminants that are in the water like you know chlorine lead mercury arsenic all the things and a hundred other things like these forever chemicals now you're seeing in the news a lot and those are in everything so or clothing, like plastics, um, basically they use them for manufacturing. Anything that is waterproof or stain resistant or non-stick has these forever chemicals in it. Well, forever chemicals are things that cause cancer and they're basically, like they say, forever because your body can't break it down. So 
the idea of this uh, this filtration system is it takes all that stuff out. Mm. But when you're taking the hot shower, it doesn't even have to be a hot shower. You're just inhaling the vapors or you're absorbing water through your skin, washing your hands, brushing your teeth, whatever. We use water for everything, cooking, cleaning, everything, right? Not just drinking it. You're taking in all those contaminants. So I started going down the rabbit hole, man. I'm like, I got to get a filter for my house. And I find out all these things. Like when you take an average shower, your body can absorb up to six ounces of chlorine and and uh, other chemicals that are in the water um, that are now highly concentrated, much more than you could ever drink. Like you could drink cases of water all day and never take in the, that many contaminants as you do just absorbing from a shower. So the idea is that you don't just have the filter on your kitchen faucet or on your refrigerator where you put your glass or the Brita. You filter every drop that comes into the house. Sure. So I started looking at all these systems and I got really familiar with them. And being in construction forever, I've installed like every kind of water softener and filter yeah. and conditioner and like you name it. And they all had pros and cons. And then I find this one, I come across this one and I got talking to the company and they're, they're like the greatest guys. Now, four years down, I've been working with them. Um, they make this awesome filter that requires no maintenance. You don't have to change any filters. There's nothing to ever do. You just basically hook it up, super easy installation, and it filters out all of that stuff from every faucet in your house. Wow. So when you're showering, you're bathing, you're washing, cleaning, whatever you do, Brushing cooking, your teeth. anything, yeah, it filters. Every faucet in your house has better better quality water than what's in this bottle. Mm. And uh, it's really game changing. When I installed one in my house, I'm like, this is, people need to know about this, man. Because like, you know, the water that we're giving our kids or like you're bathing, just so you don't think about these things. And it has now been proven. The EPA finally, they finally stepped up because for years they've been speculating that these chemicals can cause cancer and like the forever chemicals. But no one ever said, yep, it definitely absolutely does. And just recently they confirmed that. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal. So this is a system that I got behind and I've really been promoting it a lot, you know, to kind of help yeah. people uh, find that, that healthy solution for their home. Yeah, you just don't think about filtering out the other water that you're not drinking. And no, it's like, none yeah, of us. I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I've never have even probably until now even considered like the effects of just shower water and you like, how, right? yeah. good it, how much better it could be yeah i i was like after i found this out like i didn't want to take a hot shower anymore like turn the water to fucking cold so there was no steam you know it's like really like when it, when it started to read the studies i'm like wow this is this is crazy information and most people are not aware like they, they had done surveys only 20 percent of americans uh believe they have problems with their water but well, meanwhile it's a national problem every single municipal water system in the country has contaminants in it and one of the main Mainly that they actually put in there on purpose is chlorine. Why? And chlorine is super. It, it's a. It's if you look up chlorine, it's actually classified as a pesticide. If you look it up on the on the EPA uh, website Jesus. of you know as what type of chemical it is, because it is very successful at killing living organisms. But when you take it into your body in high quantities, what it living also living organisms. At, well, you know, microorganisms. Like, yeah. so it's it's a great way to disinfect the water. Yeah. So your municipal water that we get through the city, right? Yeah. It comes in from all different sources. It goes into a big water treatment plant, and they dump in a bunch of chlorine and a bunch of other stuff that kills all the bacteria, and then they pipe it to your house. But there's still residual levels of chlorine. In most cases, when you if you test the water that comes right out of your tap, it'll show almost as high a level of chlorine as what's in your swimming pool. Oh, but people God. aren't aware of this. And now, now go online. Just Google it whenever you get a chance. Look up the effect of chlorine on the human body and it'll blow your mind what does it do like it's everything e Ninja everything shit? bad it, it interrupts your uh, endocrine system it, it, your it's balls bad for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yes exactly I mean, it's crazy shit though right really really bad shit and you're like you don't think of it so you think of like chlorine no, it, it's clean it's got to be like it smells it smells like it's clean like when you when you spray stuff to clean it you spray spray on like a bleach cleaner yeah. right but when you ingest it or take it into your body it's bad so Anyway, after doing all this research, I'm like, all right, it's time for a whole home water filter. And I started doing a lot of investigating, a lot of researching. We have a couple of them here. This company is one of the only ones that I've found that there's no, as you can see, it's a sealed tank. So most of them have a filter every, you know, once a year or a couple months, you got to change the filter, right? There's, you know, maintenance involved, the hell of there's it. expense. Uh, a lot of them, like the water softeners, you got to put salt in them, right? right? So now the salt is basically so just this, a, this is just in and out. But how often do you have to change the tank? You don't. You never change it. So there's a line in and a line out. It's a completely sealed system, and the systems come warranted for up to 20 years. And basically, there's zero maintenance. It, it does. There's nothing that you ever change. 
and that filter will take out hundreds of contaminants. It'll actually render better quality water than we get in our in our bottled water. Wow. And that's the other thing about bottled water. Like we're all under this like this perception that uh, bottled water is safe. Bottled water is a sixteen billion dollar a year industry. Right, selling water in bottles. But if you look at the bottles, like all right, so think about this. If you were to take uh, like you go to the Chinese food place and you bring home the food and you eat, and the next day you got leftovers, you're not going to take the wonton soup container and put it in your microwave, right? Because you just know you don't heat up plastic. Not right. a good idea because right. whatever those chemicals are in there are going to leach out into your food. Well, the bottled water uh, industry is regulated by the FDA. We buy these bottles, but no one regulates. It's like you don't have to refrigerate it. You don't have to do anything to keep the plastic from coming out into the water. So these bottles, when they come from the manufacturing plant, they'll go in a truck. They go to a hot truck, go to a hot warehouse, maybe two or three stops before it gets to your supermarket. You buy it, put it in your hot car trunk, take it home, put the case in your hot garage, and you finally drink it. And oh it's like, God. who knows how many times this plastic has been heated up. But people don't ever think of that. It's the same thing as you heating up your container in the microwave. And all those chemicals that are in the plastic are now, you're drinking it. No, I, I eat my chicken pot pies cold. But <laughs> <go on. laughs> All right. We yeah. need to wow, uh, take a break. We got some news. I'll, I'll give you guys uh, a place to go to get one of these uh, filters. Yeah, I'm man. getting one. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm going to get one, too. I'm not even joking. That was a solid, passionate <laughs> pitch, dude. It is, right? Yeah, it's, listen, it will, uh, it's a pitch. A pitch he believes in. I've talked to Skip about it for an hour off off the air just skip so passionate about totally. this it wasn't like a sales pitch oh, yeah. like you need you to did your research these. all right we'll take a quick break got a little news and we'll do that right after this hey o'reilly thank you so much for sponsoring this program you know i'm a car guy and i know you're car guys and that's why it's a beautiful relationship like a reese's peanut butter cup i like to think of myself as the uh milk chocolate and you guys as the uh peanut butter, although I can, I can be flexible. Either way, uh, love your products, love cars, and uh, from one car guy to another, thanks, O'Reilly. I appreciate it. Bad Murray, Skippadel hanging in. I'm going to be in Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky at uh, Louisville uh, Comedy Club this Friday and Saturday, four shows, so come on out. Say hi, and we'll do a little meet and greet after the show. Chris got some news yeah. fired up. So uh, over the weekend at Joint Base Charleston, hmm. there uh, they confirmed a quote mishap involving an F thirty five B Lightning II jet. Hmm. The Raptor. So the pilot had had to eject. Uh -huh. um, the, the Joint Base didn't give further details on the incident or what specifically prompted the ejection. But it did request the public's help in locating this missing jet. They they think it was an autopilot. There's no crash, and they have gone on social media saying, "Hey, if anybody finds this jet, this eighty million dollar jet, please let us know." Wow. Still, so, as we record this, has not been found. Is there well, a must, reward? Must be in the ocean, right? It has to be in the ocean. Yeah. The that, transponder stopped working. I don't like these ejection seats. This, that's 80 million bucks of taxpayers Great paid. for cartoons. I want you to hang out and really try to save that jet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'd punch out immediately. Like if a fucking warning light came on the dash, I'd be like, all right, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> or you need that leash that surfers have. You know, yeah. You yeah, stay you, attached to it. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> How is this possible? This is I, not a exactly possible. Right. Wait, in the United States? Yes. Because this is this, is a this definitely States feels thing. like Hungary to me, or some yeah. some place that's weird. This is in the United States. Right. We cannot find. They can't find the jet. They're not giving away too many details. They think it could have still been on autopilot. Um, they they are saying it, there's no way it's in the air now. <laughs> that's that's some information they've given us. Um, the jet's well, can range. they say? To the pilot, what direction were you facing? Like he's like, I was facing Bakersfield. Yeah. So the pilot's alive. He and, got out uh, safe and sound. Jet pilot's and I, alive. Was taken to local medical center in stable condition. He must know, yeah, where he was headed and you what he think, was over. Yeah. And and how much fuel was in it? Because it presumably it's just not known how much fuel was in it at the time of ejection. Now let me give you this. He but well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's crazy. Now look, you cannot take one of those planes off without <laughs> saying here's how many pounds of fuel is on this plane. Like they know right. what it's at. Then they know how long he flew before he right. ejected and how much fuel the plane uses per hour, per minute or whatever it is. So they have a re they should have a real good idea of how much fuel where he ended was up. on this yeah. plane. 
But um, also, could they? F- Huh. Yeah, so um, the it's authorities be the believe somewhere. there was yeah. a possibility that it could have remained airborne for some time, though as of noon Monday, they, they're, they are certain it's no longer flying, still have no idea where it is. They're asking for the public's help to locate this jet. Wow. For the public's help. Well, the public tried to find Brian Laundry, and that didn't work out too well. We That's also right. have been trying to find Bigfoot. I we're don't no know good where this. this fa- we're no good at this, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that Gabby Petito? That's Gabby mm-hmm. Petito. We tried to find her. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. This feels I know. like the Gabby I, Petito of planes, maybe. Love, We've lost that, way too many planes in, yeah. in our history. The you would think it's got to be in the, like a lake somewhere or an ocean. It's got to be on the water. The Gabby Petito story I love because first, all America is looking for her. Yep. And then about 10 minutes later, CNN and MSNBC, they start bitching. If that if she was a <laughs> woman of black. color, we wouldn't be looking for her. And... My answer is, is no, if you're hot, we'll look for you. Like whatever color are, but if you're fat, <laughs> we ain't looking. You're done. Oh, yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> if Gabby Pacino put on about 40 pounds. Oh, my God. Oh. No search party. That, <laughs> that's that's, how, it, that's sad, how it works. That's if you're good looking, truth, we want to find you. If wow. you're if you're fat, nobody looks for We're you. We're looking for Jen Aniston, but you know, fucking. <laughs> if she gets out, we'll, 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 we'll yes, we'll yeah. we'll go we'll go look we'll go look for That's her. Sarah More incentive to stay yeah. in Give shape, right? Give us a beat, just in case. <laughs> stay in shape. <laughs> yeah, no. that's good enough reason. Stay in shape. Yeah. That should be yeah, one yeah, of like Weight Watcher they... slogan. Stay in shape. Oh, you want to be lookable. <laughs> they show up. <laughs> you want to be findable. Findable. You show up three days later at like a husband's house, like. Oh man, she's been yeah. gone for three days. Uh, did you try the Taco Bell? <laughs> I maybe she'll walk off. They some just of that got dinner. some new Mountain Dew blaster. Yeah, she's probably on Third Street. Oh man. Well, this yeah, this, yeah. I don't know. The public. Uh, we should try it. Have Lena Dunham go missing, and have Jennifer yeah, Aniston back. go missing. Oh, and we'll see who we look for. She goes back and forth. Is she where is she now in her, oh, in her weight loss journey? Yeah, she'd have to. She's a fluctuator. Oh, she's a fluctuator. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing they'd find Jennifer Aniston real quick. We Well, we certainly yeah. mount a party. Yeah, right. It's a search party. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. dogs, it's a the birds, emergency. Yeah. everyone's looking. Mm-hmm. The GoPros. Yeah. I will include Jennifer Aniston. Was I telling you about Sophia Vergara? That's yeah. my... That, the two people I don't need to hear from ever again is Sophia yeah. Vergara and Jennifer Aniston. It's like, <laughs> what about Jennifer it? Aniston tells Variety. It's like, I, just, I don't care what she what says. What's just like to listen to Sophia Vergara speak? Like, there's something yeah. about her voice. Is like, oh, God. Every time one of those entertainment shows, it's Sophia Vergara. It's like, please, shut up. She barely speaks English. She doesn't have a thought <laughs> in her head. It's crazy. There's also certain people that, you know, I think, and more often than not, we don't uh, welcome, like, an actor's you know, bigger picture ideas, but like, and there have been a handful that have really like, you know, I think like Sean Penn gives a gives a big fuck, you know, and actually like cares yeah. on on many levels. But those those people are few and far between. I would like to hear what Sean Penn has to say, but I do not give a shit what Sophia Vergara has to say. Well, what if me and Sophia have the same ideas, Adam? Okay. You don't shut. <laughs> yeah. so shut uh, you. What if we both care about Ukraine? <laughs> Sophia might be able to articulate it better. I think Sean will be on this show coming up. By no way. way. Oh, wow. He's been on before. Yeah. That's cool. He's been on before. Wow. Of course he has. Right cool on. guy. Yeah. I met him at the Laugh Factory once and he couldn't have been he couldn't have been cooler and even even he looked like he was smoking a cigarette indoors. He was. <laughs> But he looked like he it was. And I was like, I couldn't tell with the lights, but I'm like, if he's not, he still has the aura of a guy who's just like, I do things a little differently. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting the wild, dude. Yeah. And his brothers are, are certainly interesting and funny. as well. I mean, he's, that's... Uh, he, when he was on SNL, I mean, just the fuck. I think he did some really great church lady sketch back in the day. He's talented. Yeah. All I right. want to see him pull out like a Spicoli line. And then do a line yeah. from, uh, from Fast Times. That's a remake I would uh, be a part Yeah. Of. Oh, yeah. Imagine. That'd be cool. Spicoli's his, granddad. His best <laughs> line, his best line in that movie is the throwaway line when he comes in to talk to Mr. Han and he's like talking to him and then he goes, I know that dude. Like he's just point. There's a dude in the back of the class that he knows. <laughs> I don't know why that always struck yeah, me. As that's a good one. So funny because it's not even a joke. No. It's just what his character yep. would say totally. if he was talking yeah. to the teacher. <laughs> he doesn't say anything about the dude. Uh-huh. He just he just acknowledges. Oh, oh do we have it? it? Wow, good pull. Wow, is that oh, a good pull? Man. Great character actor, this teacher. (laughs) (laughs) All right, put some hair on it. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, it's a six second clip. That's where it started. Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) They never even show the dude he's pointing to. He just knows that was an improv. Could have been. He's in a class. Yeah. 
All right. So, <laughs> well, anyway, that this you. jet um, right. still missing. So, good luck finding it, everybody. Awesome found. Yeah, I don't know if there's if there's a reward. Uh, all right. So let's see. There's a there's a few apologies going around. Mm. Um, I guess we could start with the strike, the writer strike that we we mentioned earlier. So Drew Barrymore. I mean, she has gone through the ringer here. First, yeah. she announced that she's going to resume production of her show. Yeah, it oh. gets uh, they 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 pick it. They they complain. All the writers. They um, so then she releases like some weird video apology where she's Oof. just talking to the camera. It's like four. It's not great. It's over four minutes oh, wow. long. She cries and then she cries. It's a, an apology is always weird when you cry and go, "I'm sorry," but then go, "But also suck my clit." Yeah, yeah. Because I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, this was after um, the National Book Awards ceremony uh, rescinded uh, in light of her decision to return to her daytime talk show. They rescinded her invitation to host it. Their their award show because um, she yeah. had to resume production like hey we're we're a, a book uh, book award ceremony we love our writers so we gotta take away your everyone's just posturing right I, I don't know yeah. who really cares but anyway well, well here's some of her apology yeah her promise is she cares about being likable. <laughs> and that's that's untenable yeah. position in today's society. I feel like the backlash could also be that she outed E.T. And mm. some oh, people yeah. are like, bitch, uh, right, he was yeah. trying to live and assimilate. He was I'm just so hiding in a closet that. eating Reese's right. Pieces yeah. and you were like oh, freaking shit. out. I don't care if you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, his fingers were long, like, you know, but whatever. He was just got to don't be hating on the long fingers. Don't man. be hating on the long fingers. So <laughs> let's, let's hear it. I deeply apologize to writers. I deeply apologize to unions. Also, pick a lens to look into. I deeply into. apologize. Oh, it's lost for Oh, words. no. Yeah, I'm just, I can't with this. I wonder what Sofia Vergara's take is on this. <laughs> I don't exactly know what to say because sometimes <clears throat> when things are so tough, it's hard to make decisions from that place. So all I can say is that I wanted to accept responsibility. All right. And so, by the way, this apology, she she did all of this, um, but she still said, but the show's But the show's going, going on. on. The show's yeah. still so going it on. negates everything. Everyone's really everything. upset. They're, ma- they're mad about her wallpaper, Oh, the Instagram too. comments are, are flooded with uh, a lot of verified accounts being like, they're upset. I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. A lot of you know big name people that are just like, what are you doing? Like, we got to stand. Like, if you really care... Pay mm-hmm. your writers, you know. She, I think I saw her estimated worth, you know, be uh, dropped out there, and it's like, if that's what you care about, well, everybody, all these shows want to get back to going. But and I do understand too, at a level she's at and and the high profile, yeah, like it, it doesn't, it pulls the, a little bit of the rug out. Um, uh, sorry, too soon, but are it pulls they mad a bit of the rug at her out. more than <laughs> Bill Maher? Well, uh, well, well, um. It no, may, it I think it's equal. It's about equal, but Bill Maher yeah. hasn't done a public yeah. crying well, video in his kitchen, or has yeah. he? No, not yet. But uh, so, so uh, everyone's mad at Drew Barrymore's apology. She deletes this video from her Instagram. She, she did. She deleted it. Oof. And she posted, also a bad she posted a new thing. And no. It, and I will read you what right. it says. I have listened to everyone, and I am making the decision to pause the show's premiere until the strike is over. Mm. I have no words to express my deepest apologies to anyone I have hurt. <laughs> And of course, to our incredible team who works on the show and has made it what it is today, we really tried to find our way forward, and I truly hope for resolution for the entire industry very soon. She should just do the fucking show, because now she's on record as wanting to do the show, which is enough in this town. I think deleting the video is more damning than anything, right? It's like, you you did it, and then you took it down, right? Right. Or is it a PR stunt where it's like, now we're talking about it, now we can't wait to see the show come back, because that first episode will be here doing a model and being like, so I was... Sorry, for you know, and then we're yeah. all like, but, but uh, or does that first show have to be a banger? Does she have to have on Tom Hanks and Obama to go like has you to be a fucked banger. up? You yeah, know, and then, be, uh, yeah, and uh, and in that apology video, she's even like, hey, there's no PR company doing this. This is all me. Yeah, no bells and whistles. Right. Yeah, exactly. Here, yeah. it, 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 let me give you something. <laughs> we are in a post chicks crying, we give a fuck era. Chicks grow up knowing they, all they got to do is start the waterworks and every, everyone comes around. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it works. It works when you have a daughter. She starts, you know, if your daughter starts crying and you, because she doesn't get to ride shotgun to the movie theater and back, it, you, you'll, you'll tell your son, you fucking ride outside the car, dude. She's crying. You're walking. And that. then your son's will be like, well, she got shotgun on the way. Now she's got shotgun because she's crying. Yeah, she's get out of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that shit is women, effective. women get it baked in early and often that they just start the waterworks and everyone will stop. 
stop. We're we're not living in that time anymore. No, There's way too many help. angry bitches online who are like, I tried that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know one when I see one because that's what I do, and no one gives a fuck anymore. It used to be if you broke it down and cried, people would go, all right, okay, all right. No, no, no mas. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're not there. But also, don't you think less is more? If you're going to cry, apologize. Like, you can't sit. You can't just, like, bask in the in the you know lens like that for four and a half it's plus minutes. Long. Yeah. Just, like, taking, trying to find the words. No, fucking. I mean, that should have been a. Yeah, she yeah, needs yeah, a writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. proven she yeah. needs writers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that needs to be punched up. Now we'll more right than back. ever, you need writers yeah. for this yeah. speech. Yeah. A thousand percent. Well, the oh other show gosh. that was in the news for um, resuming production was Bill Maher, Real Time mm-hmm. Bill Maher. So he went out saying, hey, I have a crew. We got to resume production here. It's not just the writers that are getting paid and losing their jobs. It's the rest of my crew. So what we're going to do is we're going to. I'm not going to have a monologue because I consider myself a writer too. No monologue. No um, new rules. We'll just keep it to panel. So he can't even write for himself. Right. And if we Correct. think like you, I bet you thought of that earlier this afternoon right. and wrote it on a cocktail napkin, then we can cry foul. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> look, Bill Maher has. Does panel? I'm fine with that. 12 to 16 writers, mm. probably. I mean, this shows have a lot more writers than you think, but. His whole crew is 85 people. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the writers don't even represent, you know, represent 10% mm. of all the grips and camera operators and audience people and stuff. There's an army of people you employ to yeah. do a show that. That's so why should they be held hostage by this small group of people who get paid a lot more than they do. Yeah. Arguably, yeah. To right. do their job. So. Yeah. So he said him and his team had been hopeful that the strike would be resolved after Labor Day, but he's like, look, there's nothing moving, so nothing, uh, we're just going to resume. And uh, he said, look, and I'll be honest, the show's not going to be as good as it was because we don't have writers, but here we go. So, and now, but, but, Celebrities can't go on the show, aren't going to be able to show up on the show either. Well, we won't find out because well, today. He has announced he is not resuming production. Oh, oh wow. man! Yeah. I was gonna. I, I, I think I they, was imagining a call between Bill Maher and Rob Reiner, and he's he's going like, Bill Maher's calling Rob Reiner. He's going, uh, you want to come on the show? And Rob Reiner would be like, I, I can't cross the line. I'm, yeah. I'm very solid there, solid in with the writers and the actors unions. Okay. Because we're not doing a monologue and we're not doing new rules, so that'll give you an extra eighteen minutes to talk shit about Trump. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's just me and a round table, no monologue, no new rules, no sidebar <laughs> interview, just an extra fourteen and a half minutes to fucking <laughs> talk shit about Trump. Uh, God damn it, Bill! You yeah. know I can't <laughs> cross the fucking line. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know. You put me in a right. bad position <laughs> here, man. <laughs> So, Bill, but so he's not doing it either. Yeah, he, so he announced that uh, they, by decision to return to work, was made when it seemed like nothing was happening. And there's no end in sight to the strike. But now that both sides have agreed to go back to the negotiating table, I'm going to delay the return of real time for now. And I have an announcement. Get this done. Please. I'm going to host both their shows. I'm going to put them back on their feet. I'm going to host the Drew Barrymore show in the afternoon, and then in the evening, I'm I'm going to host Bill Maher's show. Okay, and wow. I'm I'm doing it. Who's your first I'm guest on the Drew out. Barrymore show? Rob Reiner, right? <laughs> <laughs> Talk shit about Talk Trump. Shows, yeah. <laughs> wow. So we thought we were getting those both no. both those shows back. Now, how no. come did um did you guys already discuss? Did it not make it into the um uh the root the um you know the the Rolodex of news, but the was it this past weekend the Bobert Beetlejuice? Uh, you want to talk about yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah? I don't know. Let's that talk just about this. That, that's a very um, there was footage of it. It's yeah. uh, okay, I think so, a lot more people are getting handsy in musicals than we are yeah. uh, anticipating. So this is uh, in Denver. They're watching Beetlejuice. This is uh, Lauren Bobert, uh, Republican representative, and she got kicked out. And uh, <laughs> according to her, she's like, "Look, I was just uh, singing. My, my, I was guilty to laughing and singing too loud." And maybe Oof. being a little more obnoxious. Was that her opening thing? Well, she there's there's the conversation you have before you think there was a surveillance right. camera, and then the one you have right. after the surveillance. Oh, camera. Oh, sure, yeah. So that was what she said. There's there's footage of her um, being asked to leave. That's and all I saw. Escorted out. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen this. Oh, yeah. So this is the footage. So she's, you can see the guy kneeling down, getting there, on her level. Is there an over the pants HJ and, in eyesight here? Uh, well, oh well. No, this is just her getting kicked out. But uh, for we, vaping. We, let's go to the next clip. She so, was vaping hard. Yeah, so she said. She said um, people complained that she was vaping. She's snapping pictures. And then there's this clip here, zoomed in, with her and her date. Her date is touching her chest, her boobs, just fondling. Wow. Also, up. what a weird, wow. like. 
and then as as the show is going on, and then <laughs> her hand is now going to go to his crotch. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and so there's some fondling going. Yeah, on. she's married for 18 years, yeah. I think. Yeah, she was uh, her husband. Married, no, no. So she's no, no. divorced in May. Oh, yeah. very public divorce. So she's saying like, look. So look, here's yeah, okay. Wow. So freshly divorced, back into the uh, the dating pool. Yeah, right? right. Everything. You're in the honeymoon phase, even if you just met the bus boy at the Holiday Inn Express. Right. Yeah. Everything is a fuck opportunity. And who said that? <laughs> yeah, the uh, Will Rogers. Yep, and <laughs> and he meant it when he said it. And I think when you look at Bobert, you go, she's, you know, every you get turned on in places that you're not expecting to. Right now, look, Beetlejuice the musical, the funniest backdrop for a yeah, over the pants yeah. hand job uh, and a and a boob fondle. I think based on that footage, she should go back and watch the game tape and go. I mean, there's a, you know, just sitting, like, not even looking at her, just kind of, like, grabbing it, almost like he was, you know, uh, you know the woman in the Lionel Richie music video looking for a door handle, you know, hello, you know, he looked like a blind guy trying to find a titty. I don't know, where are you guys down, like... He found it. Got a couple of thoughts. <laughs> she looks like McLovin from uh, that movie. Super bad. Super bad. Right. She's got a look to her. With she the glasses. Like McLovin. Yeah. yeah. The walk. All right, but... What do you guys come down on a privacy things? Like I know everyone hates her, but you're being filmed in a in a dark theater. Oh, yeah. That's, I'm and addressing the activity. You think you have anonymity there? Like it's dark where you're right. from where you're sitting. Yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want because it's dark and you're not being filmed. But right. then we have infrared cameras yeah, and you are being filmed, there. and uh-huh. we get to fucking right. yeah. It's the thing Apache helicopter pilots use oh, sh- doing <laughs> night missions, and all of a sudden we can just film. Like, I, I've done in the dark movie theater, I've done my fair share sure. of nose picking and ball scratching sure. and got, you know, sneaking a beer in there and sucking off the beer. <laughs> Always rolls down to the bottom. You know? <laughs> but the, the point is, like, I have, a, I have a sense of I'm in a protected area here. Yeah. Like, I'm not being filmed. Yeah, I, I, I remember I was, I was kissing a girl on the Haunted Mansion ride when I was a teenager in, at Disneyland, and they stopped the ride. Really? Skull, he got on the internet. You were kissing? Yeah, and they're like, "Please keep it appropriate." Well, how like, wow. the whole, were you? Were you discreet? And if That's you stop crazy. one of those, one of those little buggies, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole, yeah. Well, I got a hand job on Pirates of the Caribbean in 2006. Hell yeah! Uh, oh. From my ex. Shout out to Liz. I'm not gonna say her not last Liz. name. She knows who she is. Mm-hmm. She then cheated on me with a cameraman in Reno. So karma. But so um, and she's very happy. I wish her all the best. But so we're in the ride, and it's very dark. And you don't want to talk about a dark experience like that was. Yeah. There was. I mean. And it's you know, like I think full the, lights out. The only thing that yeah. gave it away is the fact that when I come, I go, "This is the best hand job on a Disney ride ever." So <laughs> that gave it away. But other than yeah. that, like nobody knew what was going on. No. We, were in the, we were in the last row of the seat. I mean, look, I poor, I chose the wrong time to come. It was right when, like, I locked eyes with a pirate that was like, <laughs> and I was like, so now you know that's every all time. I see every yeah. time. Um, so that's on you me. You still get flashbacks of that, like <laughs> in the flashbacks, moment. Yeah, <laughs> just Johnny Depp. I'm like, are you done yet? You know. and, uh, but, Can you uh, speed this along? Hurry up! We're almost at the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> All well, right. So this guy that she's with, um, he's like an owner of a, a bar in Aspen, and now everyone's review bombing his bar. It's he's, a, he's a Democrat, by the way. It's, it's a, a hard... gay bar, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do drag shows there and everything. So everyone, now everyone's confused. Like, <laughs> what is it? Wow. Which is it, Bobert? Yeah, well, she's a woman first, yeah, and a yeah. politician second. But again, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting like, venue. You rent. couldn't have gone to a fucking I don't know a David Blaine show or like something that's uh, well. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can, uh, actually here I will immediately combat that with yeah. I don't know the uh, songs of the Beetlejuice musical, but I'm assuming it's it's loud and there's something you know, cool about doing it in a really inappropriate place. I guess. Oh sure, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Out. Yeah, it's the thrill of getting caught. Right? It's yeah, like it's yeah. One of the few guys who. Tried it doggy style and got rug burns on his forehead. <laughs> Normally, oh, it's the are. knees. Yeah. It's the knees and elbows that oh take the beating, God. but never the forehead. But when you go vertical. <laughs> hey, man, you, you got to do what you got to do. Bro. We should have played the Home Depot theme song. Like that. I love that song. All right. It's a good, fun oh, note man, to go out crazy. on. I will tell people they can go to King Water Filtration. Dot com. You can use the code SKIP23 and get a hundred bucks a off. A thousand bucks Oh, off. I'm sorry. A thousand yeah, bucks off. Ten times. That's right. Yeah. 
Wow. Yep. Yeah. It's, real, it's a great time to get one. A real product, and I'm going to install one in my place soon as this mic goes cold. Adam Ray, Madison, Wisconsin, doing a, doing a live show and doing a, taping a stand-up special Come this out. Thursday to Saturday. So check that out and uh, be part of the live action Louisville me coming up this weekend at uh, Louisville Comedy Club. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Skip Bedell and Adam Ray and Chris Max Bata saying mahalo. <laughs>